What is up, my dogs? It's your boy, Mike Mason, here for a special fireside chat. We got a sick demo, a uh, hammer pipe demo made by the one and only Gonzo uh, with some gorgeous prep uh, by our special guest, actually, uh, Vance Catherman. Let me, let, me, let me introduce him. Vance, would you tell them where to find your work and like a little about yourself? What's up, everybody? Uh, my name is Vance Catherman. Um, my Instagram is at Glance Glass. Um, if you want to check out any of my work, I've been doing a ton of collabs with my father at Poly Two Fingers. Um, you can find all of that on www.catherineglass.net. And uh, I appreciate you having me on here today. This is pretty cool. Oh, yeah, dude. Speaking of pretty cool, what is this room? The ceiling looks like you're <laughs> in the Starship Enterprise or something. This is actually our sun porch. Uh, my room is actually back that way. Um, okay. This is where I have my computer set up, and then my fiance has her computer set up. This used to be like our old gaming room and uh i just spent all my time on the torch now so uh yeah. don't really play too many games anymore but yeah uh, i know that feeling man i i used to enjoy them when i was like a teenager and now it's a thing of the past responsibilities and such yeah um, yeah yeah totally so uh shoot guys there were just a couple of things i wanted to talk about before the demo um yo first of all uh some of you guys might remember i was mentioning last time we spoke that i was going to be moving soon that's like this weekend. Um, I'm actually having a moving sale on my store. Uh, the freshest sticker packs are in stock. Uh, there's some eye canes. There's like Kevlar sleeves. 25% uh, off everything with code MOVING. And that'll probably run that in, until, uh, until I hit the road. So awesome opportunity to stock up on combs, eye canes, uh, sticker packs. Uh, yo, even carries uh, glass heart dishes. Uh, she told me it was cool to leave those in my store uh, for this sale. So those make amazing gifts, you know, if you're trying to do like the Christmas thing or whatever. I'm not much of a salesman, but those are really cool, actually. They're all glass and they look like candy hearts. And you can use them for, you know, waxes or keys or whatever it'll be. Um, shout out to everybody on Patreon. I know things have been a little slow because I've been traveling and preparing to move. But an amazing demo just went up uh, with Patty. Uh, Patty Melt. As she goes by uh, incredible miniature figure sculpture so seeing all the steps that she does to make these so small was really incredible and that was something that melt and, and i kind of like this moment it was like she's happy and the piece is, is happy and we were at melt and everything in the world was perfect and beautiful for just a second you know because it's been a weird ass year and you know me and uh, vance were just talking about how they you know melt gave us this moment of uh, lucidity in a crazy year or whatever because you know they like they said they COVID tested everybody at the door and you know then we could actually kind of I mean, we were still playing it safe but you know we could kind of live again and that's god that seems like so far away and uh, what we're gonna yeah, see does. tonight is another thing um speaking of things that are far away i wanted to share just one uh, thing real quick with you guys out there uh <clears throat> You all know that the homies at Pipe Classic came on like as a sponsor, and I would have told you all about them all day anyways, but uh, they did an amazing uh, thing, the Pipe Classic Qualifier. So they offered up the last spot in an online competition that like a ton of our friends competed in. Um, I wanted to show you guys a quick video um, that, that just showed all the pieces that everybody made. Um, let me uh, get this up for you all. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> so these, uh, I'll just start this from the beginning. Tito uh, was kind enough to post this in Torch Talk and this montage of these incredible pieces that the competitors wow. made. Um, some of them, you, you know, really obvious to see like Taffy there with those amazing moons. And I mean, holy shit, look at this thing. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, McMillie Man. So many of our friends that we've had the opportunity to cross paths with and that, that have been kind enough to <clears throat> let me put a camera in their face while they create. And um, man, I, uh, Jason Howard there. I've got some amazing footage from him at Melt. God, mm -hmm. Anyways, this, this whole thing was really special and they set up an amazing website for everybody to vote. And then, of course, it was compromised because that's 2020 and we can't have an election without trouble. Um, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> no, but for real, this, this thing was just amazing and the pieces were so great and, uh, it was just really fun to participate in and see it go down and, and know that I'll be watching, you know, one of these homies, 
uh, hopefully filming them at Pipe Classic in 2021, and and Windstar, who we you know pretty recently had with us on the show and at other times as well. So I was uh, extremely uh, stoked about this whole thing. So I did want to just take a second to um, to share that that montage video that they put together and to congratulate Windstar and also uh, Terry the homie uh, who came in second place. So man, it was like. Uh, it really was like uh, a, a collection of our friends and some of those brackets were just so hard to vote for because it was totally two homies and both of the pieces would be spectacular and it's like shit what do i do those are tough moments sometimes you just gotta flip a coin um yo let's go ahead uh get this party popping i know y'all want to see this sick demo glass central station that's me um, also, that that's some of the homies who pitch in and help. Um, tonight's demo, uh, Carrie helped film. So huge shout-outs to Carrie out there. Uh, her Instagram is linked in the description. Everybody's is, actually. Um, but, you know, she was, she's been really, really helpful. And you know, I really thank, thank her for this footage. And uh, homies like Rob White, uh, Josh came out to Mel, Josh Williams, Music Man. And then these companies help me get to all of these shows and make it possible and you know and, and bring somebody with me and cover something for them or whatever it takes to make this all happen this is a, not a big money business uh but by all of these homies coming together and some of you guys out there pitching in as well it it really helps me get over this financial wall because that that's just the reality of you know the nature of reality when you want to get to all of these shows it's, even if your heart's in it and if everybody loves it you know, when the money runs out, that you know, it, uh, even good businesses fold. So that's what it is. Uh, I just want to take a moment to, to acknowledge these businesses. And they're all great. Like, I, I, I've pretty much hand curated this. These are all my favorite companies. And I'm so honored to have them with me. I'm so honored to share this uh, from people like Blake, uh, Gonzo Glass. Now, some of you guys might remember uh, he did an amazing uh, fume, rainbow fume and rake demo. And kind of shared his technique for getting these, uh, you know, all different color spectrum in the fume thing. Uh, he uses that prep here, and then this prep is is what you've made, Vance. This tie dye prep. It's, I mean, it's fucking gorgeous, man. Thank you. Yeah, of course. It's <laughs> and, and you guys, the Instagram is listed. Homie's doing all sorts of stuff with this, but in this case, you handed it off to Blake, and he's getting ready yeah. to do his thing. Yeah, Blake's a really cool dude, um, and I do definitely appreciate the opportunity to do a collab with him. Uh, if you guys don't know Blake, he's a really funny dude. Uh, you know, great dude to have as a friend. Um, yeah, yeah. This uh, this prep here, I actually did a color combination of double amber purple blue moon over uh, star white tubing. Um, okay. Lately, I've kind of gotten away from the star white just because, uh, as with amber purple and blue moon, uh, the faster you work it, the better the colors come out, and uh, working it over that you know, that color star white just makes it take a little bit longer. Um, and I found that, you know, doing it over clear uh, actually gives it a way better appearance and will fill in almost like a fume piece would. That's awesome. Now, something that many of you guys might not know about Gonzo is that he actually rolls with the crew of backup dancers. And you're going to see them throughout this episode. It's just one of those things that makes him a unique glass worker. I mean, sometimes he brings the whole hype crew. His writer is is a couple of pages long as a result, but I mean, you you got to take care of Gonzo and his boys. It's really an amazing thing to see in person, too. It is. It is. Uh, I know it's been so long. This was 20, 2018, Mel, right? No, this is 2019. I'm sorry, but it's still, it's been over a year. I know some of you guys who were there might not even remember that this happened, but he had various dancers stationed throughout the, the grounds, which if you're not familiar, you guys, Melt is held at a, uh, a summer camp, and the, we, we have access to everything at the property. It's like being a child again, but they're hot showers this time, and oh, there's it's a, a tent. property. Yeah, it's amazing. It's a, it's gorgeous. It's in the Poconos in Pennsylvania. This is like a thing for, you know, generations of, of kids to go to uh, get a really nice summer camp in that area. Um, yeah, situated on a gorgeous lake. It's called Independent Lake Camp. So it's on a lake. There is a lake. Um, 
Big but lake. anyways, <laughs> it, it seriously is an amazing property with every skate parks and like a million things to do besides melting with your friends. Uh, incredible parties every night. The, the the vibe there is just amazing, and and the dancers kept it popping. I, I do have to say that that, that added something special. It's, you know. It brings a special vibe to the whole situation. And I'll tell you what, he's really good at hiding them over that entire camp. I mean, it's like everywhere he goes, you know, anything right. he says or does, there's just backup dancers. They're ready to pop out at any moment. Anytime he said something cool or funny, there was just like, I like go, somebody would pop out and pop and lock for, you know, three seconds. And, you know, that that's just, you know, the kind of thing, you know, when, when you're actually at the event and, and get to meet this guy and assuming that his security will let you in. Just another reason to come to Mel. Yeah, yeah. It's one of the few places they're a little more relaxed. You still have to bribe them with drugs and stuff, but... You know. <laughs> well, I mean, of course. Yeah. What good would security be if they'd let people who didn't provide drugs through? Exactly. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, at this point, he's really breaking this prep down and getting it ready uh, to be worked into various pieces of this uh, poker-style hammer. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. So I believe um, if I, uh, you know, from the footage earlier that I had saw, um, he's going to attach his uh, his prep work to the end there and uh, pull off a small section of that, uh, you know, prep that I gave him, and he's going to attach it to either side of the hammerhead. Hell yeah. And this is a really neat trick that you guys out there should like take notes about. He does this at, at various points throughout his process in order to, to kind of quickly achieve a rounder bottom uh, by using that marble mold on the hollow tubing. And, you know, I don't know. I, it had been a while. I'd been blowing glass a good minute before I picked up that trick. And I was like, wait a minute. Um, it makes a lot of sense. It's, you know, the El Marver, we use that to, to kind of hit things from multiple angles and reinforce, you know, the outer wall. This is doing the same thing on that bottom and allowing him to maybe even push the material around from the inside and even that out, assuming the temperature's right. Well, I mean, you know, judging from that trick, too, if you are going to marver it, I know personally that when I go to uh, start marvering the side of my piece to get my walls even, um, I always, you know, like to have a nice round edge on the end of my uh, end of my point or prep to kind of use as a guide for the rest of the entire piece. Because if the, uh, the if the end isn't round, um, it's really hard, you know, get any of the other material to move completely round. You know what I mean? I do. Yeah, no, that's very well said. Heck yeah. Now, shout out to Coexist, man. Your dad's gallery with Sean. Hell yeah. Yeah, definitely check them out if you're interested in getting some uh, headies or if you're just, you know, interested in watching live blast blowing. They do a killer job over there. A very wide selection. There's two stores, um, one in Steelton, PA, and uh, one in Columbia, PA. Um, so feel free to check them out on Facebook or Instagram. I'm not even sure I knew there was a second one. When did that open? Well, the original one was in Columbia. It was originally oh, the was. Dancing Bear. Yeah, for about 10 years. Um, and then he actually purchased the store back uh, a couple years ago and ended up going in uh, with Sean on it. And then uh, probably about, I think, eight months to a year after that store was reopened as Coexist, they opened the Steelton store. Um, and uh, that's the store, you know, with the live glass blowing. And I mean, it's way bigger than the other store. I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah, that's the one that I've I've been to. Yeah, they usually, yeah, they hold all of the events. Like they did the uh, Millie show with Bami and Dapo. Mm -hmm. um you know those dudes up at the you know steelton store um they did the fire and ice show uh where they had a professional ice sculptor uh come out and they actually made a i believe it was a gtt torch completely out of ice that they ended up running propane through and ended up lighting it up which is really cool to see yeah i was just about to mention that i was like with the incredible ice ice torch yeah that was fucking yeah. awesome <laughs> yeah, yeah that was really cool up. yeah dude, that was freaking sweet i think they had uh the the homie uh Oh man, I'm drawing a blank now. The homie who directed, uh, what's gonna call it, the movie that got us all into this, Degenerate Art. Who? Uh, oh, I forget. What's his Dan? Dan Collins. I'm sorry. 
Dan, Dan yeah. Collins. I think he came out and helped document that. So we had some nice footage of that. Show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you're talking about that. Took me a second. Yeah, yeah. He's a really nice dude. He, he's been up to the store a few times. Um, He's a really chill, laid back dude. He's a really cool yeah. guy to talk to. Yeah, Dan is really nice. I remember actually uh, meeting him at Melt, I think for the first time. And he really helped me film the Starship. Uh, which which he was helping with, but he was like, yo, okay, check it out. You got to be in this place at this time. Uh, he kind of gave me the lay of the land, and from there I was able to film a pretty nice demo that, I don't know, it's like forty or 50,000 people have watched it at this point, I think. So, nice. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect, but because because he kind of gave me the, all that help, man, like we were able to share a, a really good representation of this amazing show they put on at Melt, and that's just oh, another yeah. thing, yeah. Was that 2018 that he was there? I think it was 2018. Yes. It, yeah. A tough one for me to remember, though. It's you know, there's been quite a few years now. We've been doing this, you know, since 2016. So man, and those dancers are just hype. You know. I know. They're, they're... To, yeah, they know what's coming. It's it's it, he's just breaking down things and getting every, you know, a lot of these pieces are. Uh, uh, it's like Legos, man. You you, you got to have all those pieces and get yourself to the point of starting the, the, the set or whatever. So in this case, he's just breaking these all down. And in this case, there's a lot more uh, material to be broken down because he's preparing to build this uh, into like in Calmo sections. So it's going to be, I think some of you guys probably saw it in the thumbnail. You know, there's like sections of the tie-dye into sections of his rainbow fuman rake. And then back into the tie dye, and it's like that throughout the entire piece. So he's got to break these things down into a bunch of sections that. And let's just talk about that before he even does it. It's just so important to get those to get those clean bands in the seals. Uh, all this preparatory work that he's doing, you know, like he's he's really rolling each blank, making sure it's perfectly round. Not maybe maybe not perfectly, but as perfect as he can get it. He's looking at that wall, looking for everything to be straight. That's another trick if you guys haven't noticed. He's putting the blow tube into the El Marver and allowing that to give it like a to hold it straight essentially. And from there, you can roll it and see any deviation really quickly. I used to use my tooling roller for that, but the El Marver is right there. And it's like, I do like having the tooling roller for that because it's a little more smooth, but. You know, rolling it in the Elmarver does the same job, essentially. So you can really quickly see if your sections are straight. Okay, and then from there, it's so much what you guys see him doing here. Um, the holes that you seal together really need to be flush. It needs to be flat. Like, no, no, no extra material out there. The backup dancer is reminding him. <laughs> um, and the, the, the holes need to be even. They should be the same size. They should have the same weight of glass. And they really need to be flush. And then, right, like, what's yeah, that? they need to have that. I'm sorry, they need to have that like really nice even lip on the end, right? Exactly. Yeah. So these are some of the tenants in getting these nice, crisp, and calmo seals, and that's what we see him setting up for here. Uh, both of these holes are really, really even. Um, and look look how much material he gets hot, you guys. It's really just those rims. There's not a bunch of play in the material back. And see when he attached it? This happened in the Wicked demo. We were talking about that roll method. Where instead of just smashing them like, you know, ass to ass or whatever, like you, you kind of roll it down, tag it at a corner, and roll the seal down. It's subtle, but it's different than just going straight in. Because if you go straight in and miss, you're fucked. You're not fucked, but then you got to move more material around, and it's much harder to get a crisp seal. So there's a lot going on here. We're talking about like eight different things involved in these Encalmo seals, but um, so much of it is having those holes clean, even, similar weight of the glass. And then when you're doing the seal, I mean, there's ways to go about it. Like he does them pretty hot and does that tag and roll down. Some guys like to do a bit of a cold seal, and they'll even do it in the Elmarver. And the cold seal method allows you to tap and break them apart if you don't like how the seal sticks. So there, there's all these options that you have at your disposal. Uh, we saw Blake do it pretty hot. He's got, he's taken the time to get all of his pieces straight, and he's got, you know, he's he does he's been doing this a minute, so his hands are, are trustworthy. 
But if if you're kind of newer to the game, you might want to try the colder and calmo method. It does not have to be that hot. It needs to get that hot when you fix, you know, when you do the seal. All right, now here he's breaking a section off. So we, he pulled it down a bit, and then now he's laying in a, like a stress line with his Elmarver. If you do this on my torch, you never touch my torch again. Because it's a little rough on the graphite. Like, I, I would do this with, like, a like a V-necker tool or something like that. But it's <laughs> Anyway, so he laid that in, and then as it cooled, he continued to lay that stress in and was able to break that off pretty cleanly. It's, it's very similar to what diamond shears are doing. They're just creating a stress line. On the hot shop, they do it with jacks and call it a jack line. But you're essentially making a line of stress in the glass and then... Continuing to stress it as it cools. Nothing cool about those dancers, though. They're hot. They really do uh, keep the action moving, man, when Gonzo's doing his thing. and They're popping off. Yeah, they were a true addition to, to Mel. They were worth, like, the three cabins he demanded <laughs> to house them. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it just adds, like, a whole other level to the whole Gonzo experience, you know. You almost just want to talk to him because, you know, you're just waiting for him to say something cool and these dancers pop out, and it's like, I mean, it's the most special thing ever. It really is. It's it's something cool, man. You know, these are the type of things you guys just have to come out and be part of this event to experience. And if you were there, you know, it's it's one of those things that's ephemeral. It happens, and then you forget about it, you know? I know a lot of you guys who were there are like, well, I didn't see those dancers, but, you know, they, they, they tickle you, and then it's over. So. But we have the video evidence here, clearly. Documented it's proof. It's true. It's true. Nobody lies on the internet. Now, here is another example of using uh, the marble mold. Man, the dancers were stoked on that, too. Um, and using that to round that section out and just, I think it, I mean, it's going to get, I think it's going to get blown back out into either the base or the, 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 the bowl area. Right. But I think rounding that out allows that material to even out. So I think that was his goal with that move. Yeah. I, I'm, so from, I, I actually just started doing, um, in Calma, like I'm just trying to learn how to do it. And, um, some of my shop mates have told me that the, uh, and so another thing that my dad has told me as well is that whenever you're doing it in Calma, the biggest thing to remember is, is even holes, even clean holes is the first step. And also to make sure that your, uh, your, you know, the things that you're actually encoming together have the same wall thickness. Um, just because that's the truly the best way to get, you know, that, that seal on um, that ring around your piece completely clean. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's totally, uh, that's a thing, and and homie is like, if if you're newer to the game, if you're older to the game, this thing is happening in your brain. But if if you're fresher to the torch, what what's happening when the wall weight on one is heavier than the other? When they get hot, the heavier one, the glass wants to be even. So what's going to happen is the heavier one is going to suck material from the thinner one. And they're going to kind of even that it's going to, I mean, it's almost like a ramp of material essentially is what you would form at that point instead of a, an even surface. And in doing so, it's going to pull material around and distort your line a bit. It's possible that it might be even enough to all settle down and still look pretty crisp. But if you truly want the crispest of seals and, and the cleanest of in calmos, Especially if you're doing like lip wraps and stuff and you want that wrap to be really, really crisp in there. It's just essential that those holes be even and the wall weight involved be even as well. So they're not pulling material around. Um, I mean, it happens in like, I don't know, if you're doing like a two-piece Sherlock, for example, when you make that seal, they're, they, you're, you're trying to move material around. You know, in, in this case, you're trying to avoid it or mitigate it. Or, you know, or hope it doesn't happen. But, like, it, think about a time when it has to happen. And and think about how you make that happen, you know. And it's by putting the heat where that glass needs to flow to and, and letting it flow to that area. But if you, the same thing's happening when you don't want it to, right? Like, in that seal. So, yeah. just, to, just to talk way too long about what you mentioned there, about the, that wall weight thing. If, if one blank is heavier than the other, and it's going to pull on that other one, one way or another. In the seal, at least. So, yeah. 
I mean, I'm and like just like watching him do this right now. Like, I know for sure because I'm learning how to do in commas and stuff. I'm probably going to be watching this clip over and over and over again because I mean, there's just so much good information here and like so much to learn. Uh, I mean, he's doing this like I mean perfectly. Yeah, no, this this really is like it's and the the pacing here I think is important too. Like like see how how he like I was mentioning how little he got hot when he initially got the seal established. And then he rounded the base of that thing out so the material there was nice and even. And then he started affecting the glass around that transitional area. And now it's coming out to this blank that is like really crisp and even. And then a, a, a not really great trick that he's using there with that uh, the paddle. Or, I mean, this is marble mold, but he's using it alternatively as a paddle here and to create these alternate surfaces in the L marble to reinforce these crisp shapes. So like I was mentioning, like that's got to be the bottom or the top. Frankly, I, I didn't watch it in detail enough. I was just concerned about making sure the background dancers were represented properly because it's just it's such an important part of his experience. So the most important part, I would I would wager that is that is the case. It is true. <laughs> you know, there's Absolutely. a lot of people blowing glass, but nobody has this this type of thing and i i mean i i hope it maybe becomes a trend i think it will i think we're going to see it in a lot more places in the glass community and you know i mean who knows maybe maybe next year's melt there will be you know just thousands of background dancers i think that would be the most ideal case scenario for all of us and and it's the, the benefit's clear you know if you've got height backup dancers you're making money it's just Absolutely. that simple yeah there's no two ways about it Now that that thing is cooled, look at that. Look at that. That is, that is just gorgeous. And it's two, like, really unique preps coming Thank together, you. like, with that. Yeah, dude. It's it, it, Yours is, like, whew, unbelievable. But, I mean. Thanks, dude. I, yeah, I think they just look so good together. And now that we, like I said, now that we can see it cool, you can really start to see the effect that the homie's going for here. Um, and here, just really carefully opening this hole. Looks like he's gonna go for another section, perhaps. He's opened it too whole for it, too big for it to be the bowl. Maybe, I, maybe he's um, opening the hole in the bottom to uh, do a weld yeah. with his nine five. Oh, he's he's go yeah, he's putting a blow tube on. You're right. You're right. Sorry, but I think the top. Uh, there. See, I, and like that's the funny thing too is I couldn't tell whether he was gonna do the uh, bowl push or not because I know whenever I'm making my. Uh, my hammers and stuff like that. I always do like once I get like a nice shape on the actual head of the hammer, I go ahead and just do the uh, do the bowl push on the top. Okay, gotcha. That rainbow prep was looking good too. Once that thing cooled down, you can can even within that one section, you can see that he got the bands of you know the alternate kind of effect of the color man i i think that prep is just beautiful no it's gorgeous i mean um he showed me it. i wasn't able to I, I think i was helping my dad do something while he was doing this um so this is all like new footage to me completely i wasn't able to watch him okay. do it um but he showed me it or whatever and like the combination of the two just looks sick i was super stoked i mean that fume um is definitely gonna fill in just so beautiful it's it's gonna look right. absolutely sick yeah I almost uh, feel like it's like a little bit wasted, you know what I mean? Like uh, on um, anything but a piece like this that's made for dry, you know? Absolutely. A lot of times that, that pattern, he's using it in, you know, like a rig or whatever. And it, the rig is just never going to get darkened in the way that a dry piece is. So in this case, this is like best case scenario for that rainbow <laughs> fuming loop in my opinion yours is gonna be is gonna be popping regardless but his is like and it's one of those ones where like i want a pint glass of it you know and put like a stout in there or whatever just bam. yeah yeah i definitely do agree with the fume on smaller hand pieces because um you know when you have like a bigger piece or whatever you're cleaning it a lot because you have the water in it and stuff like that and you know if you let it get dirty for too long then it just tastes gross but it's like you know a pipe yeah. yeah, you can. It just fills. You know what I mean, and uh, you really get those colors to pop out way quicker. Yeah, yeah, totally. 
Yeah, if it's filling in in a in an oil rig, like <laughs> you're probably like in mold territory or something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's happened to me. Don't get me wrong. I'm like, damn man, it's been like a week. This thing has had shit floating in it. I got time to uh, time to change the water. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, I had an old elf piece that I was using, like just a beaker, um, for concentrates, and uh, the down stem like just filled. It was so gross. Like I was, I was cleaning the actual piece. I wasn't looking at the downstem. I was just rinsing out water, and I get a look inside of it. And it's just full. And I'm like, this is so gross. I'm like, definitely gonna move to a smaller piece that's easier to clean. Word, yeah. yeah <laughs> ease of cleaning is a concern. Yeah, like some of my like, I, like the Toro two section bubblers and stuff. I love it. It's so difficult to clean properly, and yeah, one of those things. Oh, yeah, so the homie opened up that section on the bottom and did that same the, the, that same process that we saw, you know, using the reamer to get it open to these extremely even sizes. I I've imagined there's like this point on the reamer that he kind of internally knows is where he wants to stop, you know, to help keep those holes nice and even. And yeah, here is making sure that that connection looks clean. And then he can proceed and start to put more heat into the area around it. In this case, he wants to make sure that shit's happy, and then he's probably going to pull some material off like he did last time before he actually goes in and uh, really works that out into, you know, a section on the bottom where it's just like one piece of tubing. So, yeah, just really an awesome opportunity to see that same process that we saw before again. And I'll try and ramble less this time, so... <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and I wonder if we'll see him do the same thing to even the material out, you know, hit it in that in the marble mold and, you know, like I said, probably giving it a little bit of a puff once it's in the marble mold and the surface on the outside is cooled because, you know, that's been kind of forced to be nice and round and then a little puff can help the interior wall just kind of be like, Bruh. get happy. kind of. Vibe. I'm definitely, hmm? I'm sorry, I'm, no, I'm definitely good. Yeah, my bad. Uh, I'm definitely going to try that marbling technique out. I, I've honestly never really even thought of doing it that way before. And like just seeing him do it this way, like I said before, I mean, it just like gives me a bunch of ideas. And I just want to get back on the torch and try this now. I mean, this is this right. is pretty sweet to watch. Cheers, man. Yeah, I'm glad you're digging it. Uh, the, I love I love what I get to do. It's a real honor to be able to share this. I, I appreciate guys like you and, and Blake so much, you know, letting me share this and Hopefully give some homies out there, you know, some, something that will inspire them to go into the studio or a little trick or two to go in the toolbox. You know, maybe you're not making pipes like this, but one day one of these moves will be like, wait a minute. Right, I'm going to grab that marble or whatever it'll be. And, and that to me, that's so much of what it's about is just kind of help filling in the toolbox. And I don't, uh, you know, I feel like we're years past this thing where everybody's like, well, if you do a demo, go and knock it off. Or like, yeah, everybody's knocking everything off these days. It's, it's like a cliche yeah. thing, you know. I'm not saying it's not it's cool or anything. I'm just mean to say that, like, we're all past that shit. It's Especially, just... I'm sorry, especially at events like Melt where you just go and everybody's just willing just to tell you anything, how to do anything, how to learn whatever. I mean, you can walk around anywhere and, you know, if you want to know how to make a frit pipe, there's somebody making frit pipes there. If you want to know how to make a recycler, somebody's making a recycler there. I mean, the, the options are just limit, limitless. Yeah, um, totally. And, you know, and I think it's the same scenario where, like, I think every, I mean, everybody involved accepts the possibility that somebody might just be a dork about it, you know, and go straight to the copy machine or whatever. But I think the, the root assumption at this point is that they just want to help homies have a, you know, help them get down the path a little, you know, it's that the, the, the root assumption of why people are helping and such is rooted in that notion that eh, they're not going to go and try and totally and even if they do. Some people are only going to do it when they're comfortable to the point that they're not worried about that, or it's not right. even a thing. It's like you you could not you know you could go knock off some of your dad's stuff, but it doesn't fucking matter because you're not Polly Two Fingers, baby. You know what I mean? Like kind of vibe. And then there's other things where you know somebody might be a little concerned that somebody might try and clone what they've shared or whatever it'll be. And I think that's actually a reasonable concern. But you know, in in general, I. I People like Blake, I mean, I think if he were here with us, he'd probably be like, yeah, take this shit and, and I hope it helps you. Is the kind of the fundamental idea here. 
Well, and also too, it's like, you know, you know, if you know, if you're confident enough in what you can do and you're confident in your style and your work, you know what I mean? I mean, you can replicate stuff to a point, but you know, you know, your work's always going to be your work. You know what I mean? If people like your work, they're going to keep coming back for your stuff. Yeah, totally. Yeah, there's, there's. I mean, you could totally be like the proto hitter in the shadows if you want. That's a job opportunity in every area. You know, there's always some shop that that needs X, Y, and Z. And if you can be the guy who will silently produce it, you know, and you don't ever want to have that. I know plenty of guys like that actually. Like they don't fuck around with social media. They're just like that dude who does that thing for these stores, and you know, and they've been doing it for ten whatever years. Yep. Kind of thing, but at the same token, if you're trying to actually, you know, es establish some kind of unique style and that sort of thing, you know, it's then it does become this tougher decision internally and externally about how much do I share and when do I share it and why do I share it and all that. And I'm just glad that so many people have landed on the side of, you know, being helpful to others, you know, trying to come up in this this thing that we do, which is very difficult. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's it's really a cool thing, you know? It's, I mean, glass as a whole, it's just, I mean, it's like, for me, it's super therapeutic. I know a lot of other people feel the same way and, you know, creating and, you know, creating with other people and looking what other people create. I mean, it's 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 a really cool feeling. It's a really cool thing. And um, I encourage anybody that doesn't already blow glass to definitely try it out, especially nowadays with uh, channels like Torch Talk, like you do, um, obviously, and uh, Facebook and Instagram. I mean, there's just so much knowledge, you know, everywhere you know, you can look at and like try different ways. And, you know, it's, it's way different than it was, uh, you know, 15, 15, 20 years ago, you know, according to my dad, I mean, it was a completely different world. <laughs> yeah, no, it, yeah. I only started in 2013 and even then it was just starting to open up and Not really, I, yeah, I'm, I, I'm really, I'm proud to be part of that tapestry of information you know, Revere, Corning, and more recently, the homie with Pipe Dreams has been doing incredible work. There's some really awesome uh, media out there that's helping share our story. And yeah, you know, I was just telling the uh, I was telling the guy at the supermarket the other day. I was luring him into glass because he was, uh, yeah, it it came up more randomly, and he was like, "Wait a minute, what? You do what?" And uh, and I think he's might go take some classes here at the local studio and. That's awesome. Yeah, totally. I mean, it seems like he wanted something to do that didn't involve, you know, groceries, but <laughs> not. But yeah. it uh, it, uh, it it seemed like something that that had fascinated him, and yeah. You know, once I turned him onto the channel, maybe he's watching tonight. I don't know. But um, in any event, it's that it's awesome to share that magic and kind of turn people on to uh, these sources of information that can help them get down the road in a way that beginners in the past, man, no, 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 no. All right, here we go. So the homie opened that hole and got it just to the size that he wanted, and now he is getting the glass around it hot. We're going to use this fat graphite reamer to push that bowl. Oh, no. He's like fisticuffs here. <laughs> and it looks like he's doing this in a couple of steps here. That's a process I like. That's that shit I do like. Um, especially on a nicer piece, you, you really don't necessarily need to, to do that, that bowl move and all at once. You can totally kind of get the party started and then more specifically heat the area that still needs to continue moving and end up with what I think is a more precise result. See, that's interesting, too, because, uh, I mean, I didn't even realize that that was a thing. Like, I'm learning things sitting here, which, I, you know, it's really cool. Um, I think, you know, because I started out making spoons and, like, you know, tie-dye pendants and stuff. And uh, I think spoons have kind of gotten me into the habit of, you know, just doing a one and like, just a one-go, like, you know, just bull push, you know, just all in one. Um, and it's cool to see another way of doing it because it does make a lot of sense. You almost kind of get it started just to kind of see which way it's going to go, how it's going to move. And then you kind of just, like, you know, couple more times just push it all in and get super straight how exactly how you want it oh yeah shout outs to ariel allman there in the background Another yeah her one. work is her work yeah. is amazing too phenomenal yeah, her work is dope yeah i think uh the 
Yeah, I got a great collaboration that she did with Salt, actually. She sent over some prep. We got to film that. A lot, a lot of, oh, oh. Whoa. Bam. And <laughs> <laughs> ready to go. <laughs> yeah. That was a little aggressive, man. The background dancers probably were just like, ooh, let's take a step back. Just yeah, they got them way too hype. <laughs> 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 so seriously though guys the homie i mean um that did look like it popped maybe a little more than he wanted maybe he does it like that all the time i don't know he's a he's a beast um but in any event i think he's cleaning that up a bit these things happen and and sometimes it looks like he's yeah he's cooking that back down a bit and he's maybe gonna go for this in a bit more controlled fashion pull some material out and that's okay. These things happen, man. Even ballers with an amazing crew of backup dancers sometimes, you know, pop that hole a little much. And it's okay. You just cook that shit back. It's one of those things where the less you freak out when it happens, you know, the more chance you have of getting back into the zone very quickly, you know, and proceeding. Like, we could have just edited that out and you guys would have never known that there was a weird attempt at that, at that uh, pop-out, right? But it's the type of thing that you know, I think the homie would have been like, nah, leave that shit in. Let them see that that it's no big deal. Yeah, I definitely do think part of getting better is learning how to fix your mistakes better. Hell yeah, big time. Yeah. All right, here's setting up a bridge, you guys. Just careful heat there so that the blow tube doesn't get distorted. But you need a good seal there. You don't want that seal fucking up when you're trying to do a nice... um, When you're trying to seal something. Also, guys, in a, a piece like this, um, where the sections are have a decent amount of weight to them, uh, definitely like 7 mil, in my opinion, minimum uh, for the bridge. If you use like a 5 mil or, a, you know, like something like that that's sitting around, uh, when the piece gets hot, if the rod flexes, then your bridge is going to let the seal flex. And if the seal flexes, it's usually going to flex down and tag a bit. And then it's really fucked. So just just cut that off at the pass by always using nice bridges, you know? I mean, on bigger pieces, you're going to, like, do 12 mil bridges. Crazy shit. But on a piece like this, to, um, anything that's not, like, uh, like, like, if it's, like, a flower petal or something, yeah, sure, 4 mil bridge is fine all day. But if it's a piece that actually, like, where gravity could affect it, you know, and, like, um, the neck is going to be hanging off of this thing, you know, and, and it's not much, but you know, the gravity is going to be pulling down on that seal. And I'm not fucking around like four and five mil rods have bent on me doing two piece Sherlock's and stuff and ruined the seal. And I'm just like, okay, well, I definitely learned my lesson there. And, and then it happened again. You know, like I said, with a slightly bigger one. And I was just like, all right, we're going to stick with sevens. So yeah, there's a bit of, you know. Learn from my mistake instead of making it by undersizing your bridges. There's honestly nothing worse when you're, you know, you just finish your can, you have your neck piece made, and you go to, like, you know, tag it on, do the weld, and you just watch it sag because, you know, you don't have a good bridge or... Yes, exactly. Know. It is sags. Hard. Yeah, it's... <laughs> I hate that shit. That, that, <laughs> yeah, no. Like I said, only happened a couple times, but that's enough to establish a strong PTSD. Exactly. Sagging seals, yeah. It's like I said, it's like it'll it'll tag where it sags, and then then that that's a that's a seal killer. You know what I mean? Like material being off, stuff like that. Seals can survive, but once you get a little tag, it's so hard to work that out. It's that, that that's one of the worst situations. So, um, and then yeah, I think the homie's just prepping up some more uh, uh, of that rainbow fume, but it looks like material that was starting at a smaller diameter that'll be more appropriate uh, for the. Uh, neck or whatever the the stem i don't know what's that what's what do you call that the stem on the hammer or whatever yeah the, the neck the stem sure um, yeah i'm like stuck in rig terminology or something like wait wait a minute how do we describe this piece again shit well Slip that's like little... the funny thing too oh sorry go ahead no go ahead man you it was all you go ahead oh, okay um like you'll go talk to other glass blowers and they'll try to explain to you how things are and it's like a lot of times i mean my dad i asked my dad how to do something and he's like i just need to show you man because you know they go to explain something and they'll use different lingo than you're used to and it's like so hard to picture how to do something without actually seeing it like directly in front of you or yeah. you know whatever yeah it's hard to describe that was something micah evans talked about at the very first melt actually and um 
he was talking about his process of teaching and stuff and uh, how a lot of these mechanics, man, if you don't talk about them pretty consistently, they just all become magic. And then at that point, it's so hard to talk about it, you know, uh, especially with another artist who might not have the same vernacular. Yeah. So, yeah, I think there's there's something to be said for that. And I think, you know, like, um, it makes me think of people like uh, Eli Maze and Andrew Pollock and, uh, man, some of these cats who teach, um, they they come up with some of the best, like, uh, verbal descriptions of these things, you know, that are just kind of universal and like everybody in the room can then understand that mechanic. And it's one of those things where I I've had the opportunity to kind of film them in their classes there. And I'm just sitting back like blown away at, at what good teachers they are and how, how good they are at explaining these concepts. And that can be a very difficult thing. You know, it's almost like you've, you've got, you've got to approach it almost like a job of teaching if you want to really be able to explain a certain process really well you know if, unless you're thinking about doing that you, you just fucking do it well yeah for sure to be able to put an image in somebody's head on how to do something just through words is pretty impressive um totally very difficult process to do and you know obviously you need to have a really good understanding of glass and everything it does and you know how people you know how people understand things all that kind of stuff there's so many factors that go into teaching people uh, just through words as opposed to, you know, showing them, you know, that plays into that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, the great thing about classes is usually they can do both, but at the same token, man, like, like the one is so important to establish that baseline of understanding. And like I said, it's something that's really impressed me about my friends and peers who teach, you know, and yeah, uh, realizing like, man, these dudes are fucking 10 years out ahead of me on how to explain glass. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> whatever but i do the best i can to john madden this shit for y'all out there but um in any event yeah no it, it is a thing to to talk about um i wanted to mention one thing i noticed the homie do there when that piece was hot he, he rolled it in in uh the marver to check for straightness and he kind of let the hot part settle down straight i could be wrong but i i saw him do it it was subtle but he threw that thing on there pretty quick while it was still hot and while it was rotating and you can do that you know that's the idea is to let it settle down and then roll it more and if it needs to let it settle down and roll it again and watch it lower into position and that's kind of i mean that's what kiva ford essentially taught me with, with the tooling roller to straighten you know is rolling it and watching for it to lower into level roll it again and let it lower into level and and that process I, that's what i saw him do as he was setting up that one end on that thing because i think he wanted to just sit really straight that makes sense it makes a lot of sense cheers man yeah no nah, dude anything kiva ford taught me is the goldest of things kiva ford roger paramore there's a few people who are just incredibly important teachers that i've had the opportunity to learn with and you know, they develop that core understanding of glass for me that is, like, proven true. Now, this is, a like, I think this is the end of the mouthpiece or whatever. He's kind of starting to build this section that's going to become the neck or the, the handle of the hammer or whatever you want to call it. Um, but, yeah, I think this right, this part right here is, like, close to the mouthpiece. And he's just going to start building this thing out the same way we saw him kind of build the can, actually, just smaller and tighter and involve you know a different type of shaping so yeah pushing a maria on this and you know when you do these marias in a perfect world they're straight but a lot of times you just need to while it's still fluid uh hit it against some kind of something stationary to straighten it out yeah, the edge of the marva there definitely helps keeping your um, keeping your Maria really nice and straight. If you can, it's always awesome to like just be able to hit it from both sides. But generally, uh, I feel like if you can hit it from the one side, yeah. you can usually just get it pretty straight. You just gotta make sure you get all that stress out. Yeah, I agree. And yeah, here again, it's like the homie wants this thing to be almost like a perfect little section of tube coming off of here so that he can do another really controlled seal into the next section. 
And the way that he's holding this is keeping it really into a nice position and really even heating on the end so that when he blows the hole, it's going to be right in the center and it's not going to move material around in a weird way. And that when he opens it up, he's going to be moving material around. Nothing's getting pushed out of center. That sort of thing. So it's the way that he was holding it there and having a really, really, really precise heat going into the end of that, letting it... You know, he evened it out in the Elmarver before any of that even happened. All these steps contribute to a, an even piece of glass that is going to seal up to the next one that's been prepared the same way, really fluidly. And, and you know, it kind of takes me back to, uh, you know, it's not necessarily for Encalmos, but just any seal in general. Uh, this methodology that I learned from Mike Nan, who's a merged scientific absolutely amazing scientific glass worker um but he's got this methodology called 40 40 20 and essentially it's it's a math that that adds up to 100 percent of the seal and the various steps um but then also your math transfers from one step to the next so like the first uh, 40 percent of that seal is like what we've been talking about with getting the holes even the wall weights even uh flush same size all those tenants are going to be kind of step one and if you've done all of those things you've done 40 percent of your seal and then when you actually do the initial seal that's the next 40 percent so if you've gotten them like we see blake do here he gets um just the right amount of glass hot he tacks them together uh cleanly and that's your next 40 percent and then your next 20% is really just cleaning that seal up. And, you know, we see in this case, Blake did a lot of other work to kind of prepare the next section to, 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 for its action. But then he comes back to the seal and, you know, kind of puffs it out. And there's not too much fuss there. You know, it's by virtue of everything that's happened before, those puff out really evenly, you know. And he's able to just kind of put even heat in, roll it in that Elmarver, you know. He uses the uh, the paddle along with it to reinforce that tubular shape or whatever but that's the last 20 percent is just kind of cleaning up the seal and then like i was mentioning that these things transfer so if in the beginning one of them had a wall weight that was not quite right or one of them had a bleb on the lip or something you know that means that you've only done 30 percent there 35 and then now in your next step it's not 40 it's more like 45 or 50 percent of your work because that step just became harder. And then if you fuck that step up too, then by the end, you know, what should be a quick cleanup that happens <clears throat> relatively easily, now could be 30, 40, 50% of your work because you've got to fix errors in the previous parts. And, you know, it's really, it it's just a teaching methodology to, to help think about uh, how a seal is done and, you know, the various steps involved and, like I said, if you skip any any of those things in the beginning, and this is so true for any glass process, that one little thing that you thought you would skip ahead on, you know, making cups, you don't do the counterbalance on your punny, or you don't get a big enough seal here, you know, or you, all these little compromises that you make that oftentimes don't really save you much time at all in the end, um, those are the things that are going to fuck it up, so... It really is just best to think about all those little steps and really make sure each one's right before proceeding. And I think we were talking about this recently on the show. I, I, I don't remember a month ago or two weeks ago. Not not years, but um, about how dudes who appear to work slow but don't make too many mistakes, like get a shitload of work done, you know? It's so much that vibe. Like, take Absolutely. the time word cheers man yeah like take the time to do each of the steps and you know you're not gonna waste a bunch of time having to fix shit later or overall higher success rate um so yeah that that's 40 40 20 or my best in interpretation of it for you guys it's been a long time mike's an amazing teacher if you ever have the opportunity to learn with him especially like lathe work oh man do not pass that shit up that was a really special class
Yeah, I think that was all really well said. Um, my shop mate and I, uh, Zane, uh, shout out to Inzane Glass. Uh, he's been helping me, like, just, like, blowing glass, too. He's been blowing glass uh, a few years longer than I have. And we had the conversation the other day, like, you know, it's funny how something as simple as not making, like, if you don't make sure your, you know, your handle or your point, you know, your section is 100% straight, that could easily affect how easy the rest of the piece goes or how smoothly the rest of the piece goes. Like, just little steps like that are so important and so crucial to making sure everything goes, like, buttery smooth. Cheers, hell yeah. All right, I'm going to step away and get me a, a drink. I'll be right back. Now's your chance. Do the same. Word, all right, that's what's up, that's what's up. All right, all right, all right. It's Mike McConaughey. Not anybody knows Matthew McConaughey's been like everywhere lately because he's got a book out. Got like playlists on Spotify, all that. I'm pretty sure that he can legally only do one all right without infringing on his character from Dazed and Confused. Anyways, these are the things that I spend my time thinking about. Other than glass. And here's another section. Vance, I see your back, man. Dude, this yep. this section is gorgeous, too. Holy shit. Thank you. Yeah, they're all really pretty. Thanks, man. I uh, appreciate that a lot. Um, like I said earlier, uh, I've definitely changed it up a little bit. Uh, so if you, got, you don't mind if I shout myself out here a little bit, right? Dude, of course. No, man. I'm, that's why you're here, baby. Big up yourself. Awesome. Thank you. Just always like to ask just to make sure. <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> We're only here to talk about me and Blake. <laughs> <laughs> just play um, ahead. Yeah, no, go ahead. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, like I said earlier, I've kind of dipped away from the white. I kind of come back to it every now and then just to change things up a little bit because it does give a whole different look. Um, but like I said, if you want to check me out on Instagram, my name is at Lance Glass uh, on Instagram. Uh, I do a lot of my prep now over clear just because it gives it that fumey look. Uh, it really does feel in nice, and the colors actually come out more rainbowy and stuff like that, um, especially when they fill in, too. They don't burn out nearly as quick. Uh, you know, when you're working with double amber purple, the quicker you can do it, the better. Um, so I like to work sections, you know, as fast as I can with, you know, as making them as clean as I can, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. <clears throat> now you go live sometimes, is that right? Every now and then. I usually don't go live with other people in the shop because, you know, we're kind of always just bullshitting. And, I got I mean, you. You know what I mean? You know how shop talk goes. Everybody's kind of just, like, joking around, having fun. And, oh, you know. yeah, I I'd have to ban myself from Torch Talk if you go for the <laughs> shop talk. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like to go live every now and then, just you know, say hi to people. Uh, you know, just you know, so people, so if anybody's interested in checking out my work, they can. Or if anybody wants to ask me any questions, if they're interested, they can. Um, it's just cool to do. Uh, like I said, I used to do a lot of like video game streaming when I was younger. I wasn't big or anything like that. I kind of just did it for fun so my friends could watch. Um, so I kind of just enjoy having a live audience and talking to people and, you know, interacting with people. Um, nice. I might potentially do that more in the future if I do end up getting my own place, uh, like as far as, the you know, like my own shop and stuff like that. I, I do kind of like work with other people. Um, but I go, I try to go live as much as I can when there isn't people at the shop. I gotcha. Nice, nice. Yeah. And, you know, I, if, if some of you guys didn't catch the beginning, 
not to make this about me in the middle of an amazing demo, but I'm actually about to move and I will have a home studio again and it is going to be wired for streaming. Um, awesome. You know, at least as properly as, as, as it was a couple of years ago when I had a really nice camera kind of crammed in the corner and like even a camera uh, mounted over my shoulder. That's all coming back, baby. I, I actually really look forward to kind of going live more again like i used to go live when i would do millie pulls random stuff like that like it's all about to happen again I'm, I'm very excited about that actually but not not to get away from what i was asking you about you know because i saw you were live just recently i was like oh shit my man's going live so if the homies want to see you doing your thing i should give you a follow yeah i appreciate it dude uh, i'm sorry i appreciate that dude i'm stuttering a little bit um it's all good you know, and like I said earlier, thank you again for having me on. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I appreciate, you know, you having me on here. It's a really cool experience, and uh, yeah, I'm Dude, super no worries. I'm here. I'm so glad you could join us. No, this is great, man. I really I really do enjoy having other glass workers with me here to, to help bounce some of these, non, you know, concepts off and make sure that, that they can call me if I'm talking nonsense or whatever. But no, um, <laughs> yo, I did want to mention here um, – we saw uh, an example of what I was mentioning prior with the, the cold in Calmo. And as much as Blake's doing it pretty hot, he showed that even if you're doing it pretty hot, you can still break that, that motherfucker apart if you have to. So um, I know I was, we were talking about it. I didn't want to interrupt or anything, but um, that's something to notice just a second back because he initially did the seal and he was like, eh, I'm going to pass on this and stressed it as it was cooling and it apparently wasn't sealed enough that that stress was enough to break it so just uh i thought that was a cool example of what we were talking about earlier even as much as i was using blake as a an example of somebody who's at at, at, at least doing kind of a medium seal you know but I, that might be the best way to, to settle on it actually he's like a medium sealer it's not like a hot seal it's not a cold seal He's medium seal, but that gives him enough room to play in that instance where he wasn't happy with the stick. Yeah, he can kind of go either way if he wants to. Yeah, I like that a lot. I think that's and here's that 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 I was mentioning again, you guys using the L Marver to check for straightness. You can only do so much if your handles are off, you guys, and I really think that uh, doing this sort of thing in the beginning, here the homie's pushing a, a nice Maria, actually, just pay attention to the timing there and the positioning in the flame, how he wasn't, like, jamming that flame directly on the tube, he was kind of floating above it at the end there once the, once the Maria started going. Little details like that. Here's doing it again. He's, like, riding the bottom. So he, he doesn't like distort that area where it hits the tube. Flame positioning is pretty important with these. Um, and what the fuck were we talking about? Okay, the straightening thing. This is actually important. L listen up, my dogs, especially beginners, because I might lose this. No, all right. I think it is incredibly important to do this straightening check, especially in the beginning while you're developing fundamentals and kind of teaching your hands this sensitivity and getting them to talk to one another when the glass is hot. All right. Now, this isn't anything that like a Roger Paramore has said to me or anything. So, um, you know, you're welcome to be like, this is bullshit. But I believe that using a tooling roller or religiously using the L Marver like this to check for straightness. I believe that that will help your hands develop a higher level of sensitivity because if you do this, <clears throat> when things get off, you feel it. I mean, it happens either way, but I really believe that if you start using a tooling roller or using an L Marver or something like that to regularly check so that you're basically working lathe straight while you're developing the sensitivity... I believe that will lead to a quicker realization when things are off. I'm not certain about this. I I do think it's important. Like the, there was after I learned with Kiva Ford, and he kind of really is religious about using the tooling roller for 
uh, shaping and making everything lay straight while he works, which, you know, lends itself to a higher success rate, right? Um, but I really feel like that trained my my fucking hands and my brain to be like, whoa, what the fuck, when things are off. Maybe just a little sooner than they would have had I kind of learned to do it more on the fly. So, I, just a thought, but I feel like the sooner you can kind of start working lathe straight, even if you're on the bench, I think that's better. And I think that will help you later on in your glass life, even if you don't have to be as religious about it. Because, like, you, you'll be able to check faster and, you know, everything will... What you do by feel at that point will be trained by... See, here he's doing it again. When I was mentioning earlier, roll it around and then push it down. Roll it around, push it down. That's that move to correct the deviations. And it's the same type of process on a lathe. In this case, we're just using something to hold it in that position. Anyways, that's my that's my spiel about working lathes straight. I feel like the sooner you can do that, the better. And the more religious about it that you are in the beginning when you're training your brain to really fucking know what glass is and how to make your hands talk to one another when there's molten glass in between it. Which is really, you know, so much of the secret sauce, you know. There's a lot of stuff you can get away with pussying around, but when, the, when it comes time to really do something specific, you've almost always got to be able to... In hollow, at least. Almost always got to be able to control it on two hands. So that, that that's my thoughts there. Teach yourself to work that straight by checking that straight from the beginning so that you'll sense deviation from it sooner. I agree. Um, I mean, especially... And it really does come back to what I was saying earlier about, like, you know, having it straight in the beginning makes it way easier. If you have a specific shape you're going for, it's definitely a lot easier to get the glass to do what you want to do if everything's straight. Because, you know, everything's going to be the same on either side. Everything's going to move the exact same way no matter what. Um, and if it's crooked or anything like that, you know, I know especially in the beginning, I was pulling points I thought, you know, that were straight and they were no, nowhere near straight. I'm like, well, why is, the, why is my bullhead on my spoon all crooked? You know, why am I not having, you know, even, even walls everywhere, uh, you know, all across the piece? It's because it wasn't straight. I, you know, it's way harder to get a nice ball or whatever shape you're trying to do if you have a crooked point or handle. Yep, yep, very much so, man. Yeah, absolutely. Um, when I was learning with Roger Paramore, he does these ornaments that are like Maria's and then twisting up a striped section. And he explains that he uses this kind of a, to gauge his students and see where their hands are at. Because he just wants really? to see how evenly you can push those Maria's in, in series and that sort of thing. And... You know, so much of it does come down to having those handles on straight and, you know, eliminating that, that kink or whatever. Um, That's a pretty cool way of figuring that out, too. I should try that, see where my hands are at. Just try to do a bunch of Maria's. Oh, yeah, totally, man. Yeah, you'll find out quick. Um, <laughs> there was one thing that Blake did I wanted to mention. We were talking about other stuff when he did it, but after he pushed that Maria, we saw him use the hand torch. Um and it actually reminds me of something that Justin Carter told me once. Really amazing artist, if you're not familiar. Uh, but he told me that if you're not getting cold haze on your Marias, you're probably pushing them too hot. And I thought that was really interesting, you know, because he's doing really crisp work. Very, very similar to Blake, actually. I, I feel like they're, they, they would get along really well if they've not already met. Um... But yeah, I thought that that was something interesting that I hadn't it hadn't quite occurred to me before. And I, you know, I'd certainly gotten that hot that, that cold haze when I'd push one, but I didn't think of it necessarily as a good thing. And when he told me that it was like, hmm. And I realize now that it it sort of is a good thing. You do need to go back and cook it out later, but if, if you're working at the at that temperature, you have much more control and you're going to get really really crisp work. And it's not that big a deal to cook that cold haze back out. And then nothing else is really ever happening to that section again. So it's, you know, it's not like it's going to bend around and that cold haze is going to pop back up on you or any of that bullshit. So it's just something to think about there, you know, like how hot are you doing those Marias? And then it, if you recall, I was mentioning to, to notice where he has it in the flame. He has it riding the flame uh, from, from the top. 
So the flame is like brushing the bottom of the Maria that's forming as opposed to the flame being directly in the center of the tube, which will kind of add more glass to the Maria. So that that's something to think about as well. It's like it it's it's not hot because he's not jamming it directly into the flame. You know, you're getting the right amount of glass hot and then doing the push, but just riding the flame allows it to push more with more control as opposed to because if you're jamming the middle of it and pushing at the same time, you're adding more material to it as you push and such. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. I think it does. Um, okay, word. So, yeah, man, like, once that motherfucker's going and kind of come up and just ride the flame, and that'll keep the right heat for the right... That uh, that lends itself to control, at least. I'll put it that way. So then, yeah, you might have to cook some haze out, but, you know, you got the controlled result. Yeah, and um, something I, I'm sure you're familiar with uh, who PAJ is. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a really cool dude. Um, he's taught me a lot too in class. Yeah, he's he's a really nice dude. Um, when I when I first started a few years ago, he was in the shop. Who was in our in our shop rather, um, and he had taught me how to do Maria's. Like it was like one of the first things that he had taught me to do, uh, just because I was looking for an interesting way to put like something cool on the mouthpiece as a beginner. You know what I mean? And he taught me right off the bat, like. You always want to have like a nice, you know, like center flame going, but like have it floating off the top of the flame. So everything kind of just pushes together even because, you know, you try to do that in, in the flame all deep. You're not getting like an even heat, you know, and it kind of just all pushes weird and gets all lumpy and stuff. And it's way harder to do super clean as opposed to just riding that top flame. So I think you're spot on with what you were saying. Absolutely. Cheers, all made man. Cheers. Yeah. And most of it I just stole from Justin Carter. So we're not just like <laughs> 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 no but he's so right that that you know if you're if you're not getting that cold haze man you might just be pushing your maria's too hot that's really all he said but you know then i go through and turned it into a fucking novel well hey man right. sometimes you gotta dissect that information you gotta really look into it to truly understand what you're saying you know what i mean yeah totally yeah i want to in internalize what what's what's happening all right here we go you guys this is one of those seals where you know, you don't really have the opportunity. All right, here we go. All right, I think you did the kind of the tack from the top again and a little settle in. Yep. And then look at that. He's looking at it, seeing where all that material is. I think he's happy with it. And then at that point, homies, um, go ahead. Even if you're going to bridge it up, it's important to put some heat into the seal at this point because while you're doing the bridge, that motherfucker will pop. If you just do the initial seal, it might not, but if you do what we see him do here, just put a nice little bit of extra heat back in that thing, then bridge it up. So just something to think about, you know, like, even if it's, I guess it's not really enough heat to, to fuck with it yet, right? Like he's going to do most of the manipulation while it's bridged, but th that extra m moment that he took there is like a peace saver. So get just think about that. Oh, what's that? It gets it started. It just gets some heat in there. It kind of adds yep. maybe like it, it some extra time as opposed to just tagging it and putting your bridge right on. It kind of makes it more safe. It's like insurance on your piece. Yeah, totally. Totally. I agree and completely. I like, way, I like the way he's doing the bridge here, too. This is pretty cool. I haven't seen somebody do a bridge like this before. Um, right. Nice it, and it's just set up like that. Totally. It's pretty segmented. Very cool. Dancers were stoked on that move. They like that shit too. They were popping off hard right there. They were like, mm -hmm. they were going crazy. They know that our man is closing in. On They're the cheering him on. Line. Yeah, exactly. It's really what it is. I don't think that factor can be discounted enough, man. When you look at his work, I really do think that the hype factor shows. Absolutely. And the times that he works without backup dancers, that's even more impressive. Because, you know... That's just like straight beast mode, beast mode at that point. I mean, totally. I agree. All right. Looks like that's coming off. Sweet. And now we're just on one handle. The scariest part of the piece right here. Right? Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> All right.
right, here we go. Here's where I really did love this shot. Actually, it's like all that that rake and the, the raked fume prep just kind of lights up as he's doing that seal. And That's even sick. if you can't see the colors, yeah, it just looks sick. Yeah, the flame in there, just the glowing glass, like just makes that you know pattern just pop so much. I mean, you can kind of see it right there too. Super mm -hmm. cool. Yeah. Melt meetup poster in the background from the stoked homies. Oh shit, Miyagi in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Fucking Brian. So many cool cats at Melt. Um, yeah, we talked about it a little in the beginning, but this is a summer camp for glass workers with a giant tent with hundreds, of, not hundreds, but 100 plus of your homies throwing down like this and then the main stage tent with legends like salt and micah evans and all and cats like that doing the damn thing uh in addition to everything on the camp man everything on the lake you can take the boat out you can go fishing you can go water skiing you can freaking hit the skate park they've got go-karts they've got a million fun things to do parties every night sean gold's parties if you haven't been to one of Sean Gold's parties in your life as a glass worker, then it simply wasn't complete. It's, you know, you got to. You got to find your way. And that's gotta very. Make it over there. What's that? Got to make it over there. Yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, it's very similar to what we were talking about earlier. The amazing thing that, that uh, Paul and Sean put on to coexist with the freaking ice sculpted torch. Amazing. That was like, crazy. Should, what, yeah, like, dude, Sean when he puts on a party man he he puts on a fucking party y'all <laughs> yeah he does <laughs> yeah and it, and you know that love bleeds into everything about melt and these dudes are like experience first not money first like seriously like i i've i'm not privy to everything but i've privy to enough of the internal mechanics here to know that these dudes are like that would be awesome for the campers let's do it you know and then and, and the whether it's i mean if it would put them in the black it'd be one thing but you know but the, i i get the genuine feeling from everybody involved in this event that they care much more about the experience for everyone involved than it being you know some sort of money maker or this or the that and i think it shows man the vibe there is incredible it's not to take away from any of these other events we do like trade shows and things like that but it's like going to summer camp with your glass friends. It's not a thing where everybody's out there having to deal with the booth and this and that. You know, your biggest decision is like acid or mushrooms tonight. No, I'm just playing. We don't do drugs there. But it, it, it is. It's a different vibe. It's it's a whole different social experience and a learning experience in a way that I, you know, I don't think any of these other events are. I know there's um the AGI, which is similar. It's like it's like melt, but I, my understanding like, is on a smaller scale, and I just don't know enough about it to talk about it. I know that the melt guys like used to be involved, so I I feel like they're kind of they may have been inspired or whatever. But melt is on a whole nother scale, and there's just nothing like it. Um, let's go back in and let's get back to the glass. Uh, the homie is you know uh, filling that hole so that he has air pressure and just adding a bit of heat, giving it that puff and working his way around that seal. Um, in this case, this would be like the 20% part of the 40, 40, 20 thing. You know, the initial 40 was the way that he opened both of those holes. And if we remember, go back to that part where he, he popped that, that first hole for the seal on the can and it was like, it just, it got a little, it got a little hairy on him. It just, it, it was, he obviously put a lot of heat into it and maybe the air pressure just was a little much. Bam. It, it, it was controlled so it didn't blow out more than it needed to. It just blew out really thin. So then he just closed it back down. That sort of thing, like, he took his time to prepare each of these sections to seal this way. And now that's what, now what's left is just working his way around the seal. Um, it's not necessarily a time thing. I think it's like an effort thing. You know, what I mean? <laughs> like the 20% might've taken a little longer because he's just working his way around the seal in little sections, quartering it or whatever, you know, like it's in like, you know. a, but it's more that like it was 20% of his work. Like 
there was no section along that seal where he had to sit there and do any crazy shit and like move a bunch of like a thick part of the wall. He's just going around it, making sure that in the interior uh, part of the seal is perfect and beautiful, and it really just taking his time to go through and clean it up. So it's like twenty percent of the work, not necessarily the time. You know, that last step can take a minute if you're cleaning up a seal. But it yeah, that can that can make or break a piece too. You know, you don't have a good seal on there, that thing's gonna split. You know, it's gonna crack. You know, or maybe it won't. You know, it's all. You know, if you spend the time on it and do it right and make it look really clean like he did here, you know, it, it's not going to come apart. It's not going to crack in the kiln. It's going to be a yeah. solid, you know, just nice piece. It's worth putting in that extra time, especially on that step, uh, just because, you know, it really is what makes or breaks the piece. Yeah. I and mean, look at that seal. That is just like. It's perfect. It really is. It's fucking awesome. This is really well done. I really feel like the timing, the pace here, the methodology, really clean. Absolutely. Yeah. Here he's giving it a check for straightness. One last check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like some, like as if some guy who's smoking it is going to roll it in his hand and it's got to be perfect. It will be. I think the homie's feeling pretty good about this. And then here, all right, so... The rest of that piece got pretty cold while he was working that seal in and giving it that time and that bushy flame just kind of helps everything around it be a little happier, a little less. Um, something I learned with, you know, with Roger Paramore, he, he really taught me a lot about how uh, heat moves through the glass and different types of stress. And there's like mechanical stress, which is like aggressive angles in your glass and things like that. But then there's thermal stress. And borosilicate is pretty resilient versus most types of glass, right? Like, it's not as shocky as other types, but it's not magic, right? Um, what you guys should always think about is, like, the, the gradient of the heat or, like, if we were to look at this thing on, like, a like a FLIR camera, you know, like one of the cameras they catch weed dealers with it or weed growers with, <laughs> like, that reads <laughs> heat, what you don't want is one part to be super super hot you know 2000 plus degrees and then another part to be like 500 degrees you want the smoothest gradient possible or the smoothest ramp possible you know not like a freaking x games ramp of heat from one part of the piece to the <laughs> other you know what i mean yeah like, yeah it needs to be like them smooth hills in excite bike or whatever type of thing you know exactly um, yeah, so that's thermal stress. And what happens is when one part is super hot and the other part is not, um, right around 950, that's like the stress point of borosilicate. And that's like a danger time during annealing. And that's also a danger time during working because, or danger uh, temperature during working. Because uh, the transitional part of the glass that hits that if anything there is not perfectly happy, that's when it's going to pop. Because you forced it through the stress zone by virtue of not having that smooth transition of heat uh, from one part to the other. So it's just something to think about. You know, the, the, the less... If giving it that big bushy flame helps smooth the gradient of heat from where that seal was out into the can. Instead of it going from like red to blue, right, you know, like past the seal... Now it went from red to, you know, into the middle and then probably blew up around the bowl and all that. But, you know, so that sort of thing. And here, you guys, we saw him remove that material from the blow tube and clean that bottom up. And now he's just giving that thing a nice, clean, flat bottom. Homie is stoked. Yeah, the way he cleaned the bottom of that up was actually super impressive. Uh, he preserved the pattern on the bottom very well. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, it was like a good termination kind of thing, and it cooked back in. Yep. Super cool. Oh, well, yeah. And I think some attachments are going to go on here. Um, but again, t the, taking his time to um, you know, put that thing into a bit of an annealing flame. I... I I could have let you guys watch that for two minutes, but just be aware that he gave it a good minute there in the annealing flame. 
we we cut that just a little short, <laughs> but I, I just, you know, there's a certain point at which I can just tell you that he did it. He gave it, you know, a good minute or two, and that annealing flame to to help. And here we're popping a carb. Is that right? Yep. Yeah, and then I believe that he puts on a uh, like an attachment onto the carb, so it comes out. And he also puts a marble attachment on the other side, if I'm remembering correctly. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. We saw him working on him earlier. So I just wanted to make sure I was on the same page. Seems like my beer is run dry. Yeah, that's about where I'm at. <laughs> Those fruited sours, man, those things go hard. All right. All right, all right, all right. All right, all right, all right. I think we do potentially are going to get a copyright strike from the producers of Dazed and Confused. But that's okay. Oh, my bad. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. No, I was just joking. Because I said earlier, but Kanahe himself yeah. can only do one. All right. That's what I've noticed. He never, ever on his own does three of them. Oh, really? Yeah, I mean, it's just a joke, but I, I swear I have this pet theory that he's not allowed to be like, all right, all right, all right, because <laughs> that's from the character in Dazed and Confused, and like somehow if he does the three of them, he's being that character, but he also wants to cop that cool, so he's like, he's when he's doing his own thing, he's like, all right, <laughs> he just does <laughs> one. Maybe it's just an evolution of the thing, you know, he was like, you know what, three was too much. It's just all right now. He's dialed it back. Yeah, but I have a feeling there might actually be legal logistics involved. With the no, I, I can believe that, honestly. I can tell. I know, I man. Believe yeah, that. That's just the joke, you know, the litigious world we live in, you know, where a motherfucker like that can't fucking say all right three times because it's too similar to this character in a movie. Anyways, all right. <laughs> <laughs> the Kanye does seem all right, though. Shout out. All right, here we go. We're getting ready to uh, do some detaching. Bang. I know, right? Was that a cold seal on that thing? It looks <laughs> like it. It did look like it. It just fell off. But it was yeah. like, it's like, man, he had all that weight on there. And, and I mean, he does that perfect. Yeah, he know? just put a little, uh, just put some heat in there to stress it, which, which was, guys, thermal stress. When he hit that seal that was a cold seal, that's what happened. It got so hot that as soon as it hit that stress point, cracked the seal. So just something to think about. I'm not, like, I actually, like, Roger Paramore has a Patreon. It's like $40 a month, but he's he's the fucking man. How much should he fucking charge, right? I think it's actually totally proper. And, and it's actually getting built up now. There's like 20 plus videos on there with like, practice methodologies things like that he is such an important teacher for me i would encourage you guys to check that out um guys these companies that we're taking just one minute to, to shout out these companies pitch in every month and help me get to all these shows and and frankly like they allow me to take the time to edit content like this properly you know to to to, to do what we need to do right uh they make it possible and it's as I've mentioned before, it's like this this circle of love where, you know, you guys being here and being a dank audience um, is what really makes this possible in the first place. But we hit a point where it was possible to, to, to do what we're doing now. It, there was just not enough money to do it. Um, I'm not some, like, trust fund dude. And, and I got a daughter who's about to start college. So... You know, the, the, the notion that I could keep going into my pocket to, to do this comprehensive coverage is, that ain't possible, baby, come on. 
But anyways, not not to get into all that stuff. Money is is lame, but those companies make it possible. And some of you guys pitching in on Torch Pass, um, yo, because I love y'all out there. Go ahead and throw them numbers in the chat. Uh, we're gonna we'll pick some winners for like some sticker packs or something. I don't know. Um, but how many are what's we got here? 111. Go ahead and throw a number one through 150 into the chat. Um, while y'all do that. If don't do not forget, uh, on my store I'm doing a moving sale. Literally just announced it at the beginning of this episode. Uh, with the code moving, you'll get 25% off everything in the store. So that's eye canes, honeycomb canes, um, sticker packs. That's what the sticker packs are like right now. I made a new picture today, just so you guys can see the exact stickers that are going out. Um, yeah, it's like that's it's a constant thing, you know. Some run out, new ones come in. So yeah, we're like we're at 20 stickers at the moment and that's always kind of been the dream is to hover around 20 at all times. Um these are the 20 at the moment. I always try and throw in extras of the newest or whatever, but that's the deal. Those are the variety packs. Um like I said, man, 25% off with code moving. Uh Vance, I'll throw you up, man, and and take a moment to thank you for being here with us to help commentate this thing and man that prep was just fucking beautiful like i really appreciate you and blake that was tight thanks man and like i said thank you for all the kind words having me on like i said this is my first time doing something like this so i appreciate you giving me the opportunity um shout out to you shout out to torch talk um and shout out to paulie two fingers uh myself yeah. and everyone that i work with in my shop you guys are all amazing and um Thank you, everybody, for watching uh, and being so supportive. I appreciate it, and uh, I look forward to uh, talking to you guys some more, maybe in the oh, future. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, dude, I'd love to have you back sometime, man. That would be great. Um, awesome. Yeah, fuck yeah, of course. Yeah, dude. And, and like, we need to get you actually working glass here at some point. That would be the goal, to have you back next time. So. Sweet, yeah, dude. Yeah, maybe, we, maybe we'll cross paths at uh, Spring Melt. I don't know what they're going to call it or what it'll be, but... Um, yeah, really looking forward to that. And if not, like real milk, whatever. Either way, I'm whatever gonna... comes first. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Whenever we can actually make this happen. Um, yeah, and speaking of you guys, I'm really excited about this move. Um, moving is never really fun, but uh, Colorado is where I'm headed. And um, analytically speaking, I know I know a ton of you guys are out there in this area. And I, I don't know if 2021 will be the most realistic year for it, but if things loosen up or when things loosen up, I really want to do um, this like hybridized versions of what we're doing here now. You know, there's no reason we shouldn't be maybe watching a demo that's being done completely live, like, you know, and then we'll play games together. You know, we'll do that shit right now. In fact, if anybody wants to play games, we'll throw that shit on. Uh, Vance, if I don't know if you've joined us when we play games, but we play Jackbox games where like you use a phone or another browser tab, or That's something. Cool. Yeah, that will be your controller, and then on screen will be the game itself. So everybody can kind of use their phone or another ta like a tablet or something else, some other screen acts as your controller, and we play really fun games together. That's the type of shit that I want to do. Um, I also want to make pizzas for you guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> man, I'm sad. You know, my thing this year has been uh, making Neapolitan style, like wood fired, true Neapolitan style pizza, um, like flour from Italy, sauce from everything, legit as can be. And I don't know. I, I used to. I there was. I was sharing fresh pizza pictures with you guys for a minute there, but I don't know. It was past that point now, guys. They're all perfect. So. Not, not not exactly, but close. Like, Anyways, I want to make pieces for the dogs. I don't know. There's a lot that might happen out there. Um, even with my dog, uh, Music Man, who was with us uh, back when we were doing the Melt after party. He's going to be with me out there. Um, I don't know what, it, it'll, what it'll be, but I got ideas that involve homies coming out. Anyways, um, everybody get those numbers in because... I'm about out of shit to ramble about. Or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, know, you should get a video of yourself with four Bunsen's and you should make a pizza on top of those four Bunsen's. Like, just get like yeah. 
I've got ideas actually, like um, a kiln that'll be designed to make pizza, and then. Um, but really, I just want to use like these amazing ovens, and, and but then there's other ones too that like the Coda and the Oni that hit the temperatures needed to do this Neapolitan style pizza. I mean, you got to hit like 700 to do this right. No, that's really. What, yeah, that's that's the whole point of it, man. It's like it's high temperature. Really simple, dude. I mean, the dough is just like flour, salt, water, and yeast. That's it. But it's like, it's exceptional, man. They they figured this shit out, baby. They figured this shit out the same they figured out glass. Like the Italians are not <laughs> fucking around. So, um. Anyways, no, I, 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 I'm not even playing around about making pizza for my dogs. Like we're we are going to have pizza parties. Um. I don't know the other one that I shouldn't even talk about yet, but if you guys are still with us, man, like y'all are my motherfuckers, so I want to tell y'all what I'm thinking. I know I've talked about my hot glass, hot tub show. That's happening. Uh, that's all I got to say. I feel like I'm going to get that motherfucker by January, and we're going to have freaking locals out. I mean, we were just showing the, the, the uh, Pipe Classic Qualifier winner, fucking the homegirl Shayla. She's local. There's all these people who are going to be right around, right down the block where we're, we're going to get them into the hot tub for a real interview, you know, and that that's, and if you're not familiar, I was like, all right, some of you guys know, hot glass, hot tub is my idea for an interview show where we're not actually just fucking watching glass and talking about glass. <clears throat> it's where we're just in a hot tub chilling and talking about whatever, um, and the idea here is that, you know, I, I don't really feel comfortable with this, like, explicitly interview format. I'm not fucking Walter Cronkite or whatever. I really just want to talk with my friends, talk glass, and have this organic kind of experience that we can translate for you guys. You know, and I mean, like, talk shows. Do you guys not, do you guys know that, like, they do a re, they, they do, like, a fucking whole interview beforehand? Like, I don't want to be negative or anything. It's just, like, that's the game, man. Like, you go on fucking Johnny Carson or one of them shows, like, they fucking do the whole interview first. So they've already done it once before. There's very, there's, I don't, I don't want anything to do with that shit. I don't want to have a list of pre-prepared questions. I mean, I'm sure that would be valuable. Like, I, that just doesn't feel right to me, though. I guess does not... I didn't come all this way to do some fucking fake interview show. You know what I mean? Where everybody is... I don't know, whatever. Um, but the, but if it's just me and my dogs in a hot tub having a drink, I feel like we're going to get to some real truth and and um, maybe engage on that note in a way that I don't feel comfortable like at least planning for. You know, like if I had to, of course. Don't get me wrong. I'll come up with ten questions and we'll do the hot ones or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, hot glass. <laughs> you know, like... I, the whole point here is that I want to find these formats that I actually find entertaining. Even what we did tonight, like giving Gonzo a backup dancer crew. I just want to have fun with you guys and, you know, not do anything that doesn't feel wrong to me. If something feels funny to me, then we're going to fucking do it. Like, as long as it's not disrespectful. I know Gonzo is the a, is a chill cat. Like, he's one of them cats who, was, who would roll with that, you know? Um... Anyways, did everybody get their numbers in? Because I'm I'm rambling now, but the point being here is that like I don't want to do shit that does that that is just like by the book, just because that's the way it's done. I want to get my friends in a hot tub and talk glass because that's what like like when the cameras go off at these trade shows and shit like that's where we go next. It's not, you know what I mean? Like I just want to bring you guys a bit of what I actually enjoy doing. And, and like the the venues that I actually enjoy interacting with my friends, so I hope that makes sense. Just bullshitting about my. <laughs> I think it's just, good. Yeah, try to justify my hot tub show. Um, yo, let's let's pick some winners here. I know everybody got their numbers in. Random org, and then let's play some games if y'all want to play some games I'm about that life. Um. What did I say? One through one fifty. Yep, I believe so. Bam, twenty five. What's up? Do we have a twenty five er? Do not see twenty five. All right, I'm seeing some positive words in the chat. I feel like I'm completely rambling, 
but I like I feel like you guys are on my level too, so the rambling is okay. Cause we're talking about shit we love, man. All right, I see a forty-five. What's up? Where is it though? There's a forty-four but, and a forty-two, but yeah, no, and a fifty-four. <laughs> uh -uh. I want Backward. direct hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm seeing a thirty-nine. Where's that? No. What? Where is it getting? Oh, it's because we're live. We've been live for one hour and 39 minutes. Okay, gotcha. All right, 42, the answer to the universe. Oh, I, yeah, that's Melt, I think. Who's Got Melt? It. I don't know, just some, someone named Melt. Just someone named there. Melt? Not not like V-Melt? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I tried clicking right. the picture on there, and it won't take me gotcha. to their profile, so. All right, well, we're going to find out. Yo, Melt, um, hit me up at prizecentralstation at gmail.com, and please just tell me that you won the first prize on November 11th, because I am we're behind there. Just let me know you won the very first giveaway on the 11th, and nobody will be forgotten, I promise. Anybody who's owed a prize on there, it'll happen. It's just There's been a lot going on. Like I said, I'm moving this weekend when all that is over, perhaps things will settle down and I'll have an opportunity to get through that. It's uh, been a bit of a thing. So thank you for any understanding. All right, 130. What's up? That's a no. What happened? <laughs> uh, I don't know how we just did that, but whatever. All right, I don't see a 130. 107? No. All right, 41. Nope. 139. Hell no. Nah. 98. Oh, I see a 98. No, that's in some dude's name. That's Poppy1985. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pop. You, uh, tease. 98. Hmm. Okay, well. Somebody changed my uh, settings. <coughs> Carrie. <laughs> Whatever. Um. <coughs> no, nah, it's because she has the number pad set up in her studio, and she was using my X split before. Um. All right, 82. Oh, I see a couple of 82s. Nope. Damn. Uh, well, excuse me. I think we're just going to pick one of these viewers, like on this next one. And then the last winner will be in the games. Ooh, oh, Joshua Keaton, my boy. Uh, hey, Joshua, uh, hit me up, prizecentralstation at gmail.com, and tell me that you won the second random prize giveaway on November 11th. And... Buckle in for a wait, baby, because it'll probably be two or three weeks before I get around to, to doing your prize. The older ones I've been getting through. But, um, anyways, yo, uh, let's play some games if y'all are down. Don't know who's, who's still with us. Um, or Vance, if you're if you're down to play some games with us, man. Um, Would you be upset if, you, if I said no? I just realized I looked at the clock and it is a quarter after one and I have to be up at like eight o'clock tomorrow. Is that cool? No, nah, man, I'm going to be real upset about that. I'm just fucking around. That's totally <laughs> fine. Homie, okay, thank you cool. so much for joining us. Yeah, I'm on, a, I'm on like the night shift now, man. This is like the middle of the day for me. Oh, um, uh, really? Yo, yeah, no, nah, but yo, let me uh, take a moment then to thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate you being here, man. You made the show way more fun. Hey, uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And thank you. Like I said, probably like a thousand times now that I keep saying it, but uh, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it, man. It was a fun experience. And uh, Dude, yeah. no worries, man. No worries at all. I really, you're the one I, I need to be thanking. So thank you so much. Hell yeah. All right. Well, enjoy the rest of your evening, man. Hell yeah. Too, thanks, yeah. everybody. Have a great yeah. night. Yep. Yeah. Peace, brother. All Later. right. And yeah, now, now, it, now it's just me and you guys out there. You're stuck with me. Um, but yo, <laughs> let's get this, let's get this games popping. Where is, uh, Steam there, as it were? If anybody has suggestions of games, now is your time to, uh, lay them into the chat. 
I am open to suggestions. But I'm pretty partial because we just got like the newest Jackbox games. So that's another thing to consider, you know. Like we're still we're still enjoying the newest ones. Alright, let's do this. Um All my games. Look at this. We got all the Jackbox packs, you guys. Um, but which will we play? That's the newest one. All right, we're going to stick with the newest one. Man. We got to stay new. We got to stay fresh. I do like the balloon theme of the new version. All right, what are there suggestions? Among Us. I've never played that. I don't know how to play that. Sorry, guys. Um... Wait, I didn't necessarily want to do that. I just wanted to see the description. Oh, fuck it. NRRL. Alright, I'm in. I don't even remember what this game's about, so we'll remember together. I'll be right back. game is full hell yeah awesome welcome to blather round what a fine crew well I've decided you're my family now move over grandma you're going to present a secret prompt like Moby Dick you'll describe it to everyone else with sentences like this one now, you can change some of these words, but your options are this very game. limited. Everyone else will be guessing... ...while you make more elaborate sentences. Oh, it's a lot like Free Willy 2! Moby Dick! Be fast to win big. And teamwork is rewarded, so talk out loud and work together! Let's begin! Okay, round one. Choose from our fresh farm to table prompts. Word to the wise, the harder ones are worth more points. I'm going for the hard one. But I'm not above cheating if I have to. Time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. If you don't pick a prompt in time, I do it for you. Now you're going to craft a sentence that describes your prompt. On your device, you'll see two word columns. Tap all the words you want to include in your sentence, and then tap Submit when you're finished. Oh, and you can choose more than one right. word in each all column right. if you they've want already, to be creative. They've already let me tell you guys that it's a story. That's strong as hell. I like this. But 
I'm not going to cheat and tell you guys any additional details that you guys can't tell each other. That wouldn't be fair. But it is a book. Or a yes, poem? Lord. I don't fucking You're remember. Going first. The category is story. It's a poem. Right, anyways. It's a story about a colorful creature. They're yeah, all stories. On those what? Guesses. That means everyone in the audience, too. In the meantime... And it's all doofus. A fun size sentence! Track. Track. One. A middle-aged madam. Unicorn. It's a lot like Shrek. Mm, when the presenter it. uses your guess in a sentence, you get points. Dog. The hero does the varmint. We all got together and decided. We love that sentence. Princess and the Frog. Nothing like Space Jam. Yummy. Beauty and the Beast. Eventually, there's a masked criminal. Frog Prince. Boofing. You haven't Shrek. got long left. Robin Hood. It has the same vibe as Boofing. A perfectly <laughs> plump <laughs> sentence. Zorro. Princess Bright. Mm, that was a good one. Phantom. Uh -huh. Type fast. We're down to the wire. If it's nothing like Space Jam, I don't want to fuck with Then you. the pet gets funky. <laughs> Peter Pan. Right, what Rough was it? start to the game, but y'all got the next one. Darkwing Duck. Oh man, you picked a difficult one, if dude. That's pretty obscure. Thought, I feel sorry oh, for you. Oh, that makes sense. Then hit my bad on your device. That's yeah, dude. That's a tough, tough one. I would not have picked that one. The category Holy is shit. place. It's a big place. Here we go. Texas. Brazil. Paris. It's where you view the box. The pyramids. New York. <laughs> I know some boxes I'd like to view. I understand. It's smaller than Texas. Smaller than Texas. Living room. So much store. Washington, A mini sentence for maximum impact. Over there. Mall of America. The Vatican, your mom's house. <laughs> Hell. It's bigger than living room. Your mom's house. Walmart. Walmart. This place has a digital din din. The fuck is a din din? It's more expensive than Walmart. Strip you must have a big juicy brain to make a sentence that long. Time is running out. Time to take some big swings. McDonald's. Target. <laughs> it's where you purchase the object. Ah, it's almost over. SpaceX. The mall. McDonald's. Mm. I'll say the problem was a lack of confidence.
The category is story. All right. Don't let me down, dogs. It's a story about a small anime. And we're off. Love actually. Mike Mason's PP. And a not non fiction. Mouse. Small soldier. Stuart Little. Mm. Picoto. Poem, you guys. It's a fucking poem. God damn it. If you can't make a helpful sentence, use the skip. It's a different genre than love, actually. Gulliver's Travels. A beta. Small soldiers. Whoa. All right, that's it. Farmer. That's the clue right there. If y'all motherfuckers don't get it on this clue, come on, come on. Sentence. Get your guesses in before this thing wraps up. Crow. Rebed. Robin. It's a lot like Crow. Come on, y'all got this. Come on. Come on, goddammit. sure this is my fault <laughs> well, that didn't go well but I still love you the category is <laughs> it's a bumpy specimen Let's do this. Terry in the chat what the ever-loving fuck is this Terry, we play games together after the glass demo, man. It's what I would love to do with you if you came out and then we had an event together in person. So you caught us in the in the part of the show where we get loose together. It hurts the gizmo. <laughs> All right. What is this thing supposed to be? It's a thing. Bumpy Sorry. specimen that hurts the gizmo. Pickle. Orange. Speed bump. Mm. Velcro. It's kind of similar to herpes. What? Gremlin. Mike Mason's talk about course. <laughs> Aww, look how little that sentence is. <laughs> Anal beans. <laughs> Crabs. Shingles. Coronavirus. It's smaller than dildo. In awards. Oh, time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. It hurts the finger. Pencil. Cookies. Time is almost up. Work. Chicken box. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Oh my god, I'm kidding. I love you. The category is thing. It's Guys could like uh, liquid. Let's at get least the buy some stuff started. in my store to make up for this performance. Not just playing. But for real, 25% off of code moving at MikeMasonDesign.com. Shirt. 
I. Dog. It has the flavor. Slurpy. Beer. Beer. Smoothie. It's a lot like Slurpy. Booze. Milk. Milkshake. Candy. Talk about sweet and bizarro. What a marvelous sentence! Beer. Wine. Margarita. Milkshake. Soda. Milkshake. Malt. Icy. KY. It is sloped by the sphere. I see. Mike Mason's penis. <laughs> it's nothing like Mike Mason's penis. <laughs> a big sentence from a big mind. <laughs> oh, straw. <laughs> We're nearing the end. Nice. Well, that's a fucking that winner right great. there, man. And hey, here are some points for everyone who contributed a helpful guess. Excellent. You'll be our last presenter this round. I'll be submitting. The category is person. Options about my penis all the time now. They're a delicious material. Off you go. Dog. Unicorn. Stay Puft Marshmallow Man. Trump. Chocolate. Madonna. Bob Ross. Lizard. Police. Pew. Kevin Bacon. Maybe you should just submit the sentence and find better luck with the next one. Cherry Ann. Crumpets. <laughs> Shakira. Crabs. Rocks. Torch dog. They would be friends with Torch dog. Beatles. Cindy Crawford. He's so minuscule. What a sweet You'll little sentence. Us. Time is running out. Submit more guesses. Glass blower. Rodney Dank file. <laughs> <laughs> They're in the same genre as Mike Mason's whiner. <laughs> it's almost over. Keep guessing. If at first you don't succeed, you end up where we are now. Let's see how the points came out. Now remember, the points only matter if you let them. Let's do this all again. In round two, the points are doubled. All right, coming back in the second half. By now you're practically an expert at picking prompts. Pick the prompt that seems like the most fun, or the one that seems the least scary. Tempted to just cheat. Mine is licorice, you guys, so just type that in the second it pops up and we'll both oh, get lots of points. Time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Okay, slow pokes. 
I'll pick a prompt for you. Write a sentence to describe your new prompt. If you really want to fine tune, tap individual words in your sentence and change them. You're going next. The category is story. It's a story about a rude character. And so it begins. Boofing. Bible. The Bible. <laughs> Toy Story. Freeman. Avocado. Torch Talk. The Art of the Deal. Hey, presenter. Let's go, 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 go. Jimmy Hoffa. I see you, Carrie. That's not really cool. Grinch. The Grinch. Trick. Presenter, let's go. Mike's penis. Presenter needs to do something. Time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Goldilocks. You the pres Rapunzel. Time is almost up. 101 dimensions. <laughs> Beauty and the Beast. <laughs> you'll get him next time, Tiger. And if you don't, you'll cease to be my tiger. The category is place. It's a home and go building. Here we go again. Home. It's where you have the bargain neighborhood. Museum. Crack whorehouse. Pyramid. It's kind of similar to crack whole house. Wow, what a long sentence. Damn, motherfucker's cleaning up. You can't see me right now, but I'm smiling wide. And I'm wearing a snake like a scarf. The category is place, and this is the place to be. It's a cruel community. Torch talk. Here we go. Vagina. Whoa. Bob Ross. It's where you adore the season. Scientology. New York. It's nothing like butthole. Mount Everest. New York. So much rink. What a sweet little sentence. Texas. So small, so cute. Washington. Damn. Each 
sentence more beautiful than the last. This is gonna be a person. I Delightful. didn't know Canadians I were cruel, but people. I use context clues to put together the rest. They are a humorous somebody. Time to begin. Dad. Mom. Brother. Bibros, right? They are renowned for the music. Sifa. Sister. Jack. Jim Carrey. They're a lot like Bibros, right? Mike Mason. He's so frizzy. Why, that sentence could fit in the palm of my hand. Frank Zappa. Jerry Garcia. Thrill. Bob Ross. They're kind of similar to Hallahoe. Afro man. Known for the goofy spoof. MC Hammer. The timer stops for no one. Get those guesses in. Rick James. Bam! You should be proud of what you've done here today. The category is person. Perfect. I happen to be a person myself. They're a massive <clears throat> beast. Here we go. Santa. They are known for the movie. John Cena. Toto. Dorothy. Wolverine. Bob. Gaudi B. S. Webb. Arnold. Ron Jeremy. The Come on, That's presenter. Nice. Just go ahead and write something. Terminator. They're taller than Wolverine. They're so colossal. Ooh, that sentence is a beauty. The Hulk. They're kind of similar to the Hulk. Hagrid. Oh, time is ticking. Hurry, hurry. Process known for the reptilian catastrophe. Avatar. Andre the Buguant. Only a few seconds left. Big Boofer. Congratulations on participating. This is the last presentation, so make it count. The category Close the stream. Is you guys suck. I'm just playing. <laughs> but I'm surprised nobody They're got that. A wonderful human. Oh, that's Off me. You go. Mike Mason.
they are celebrated for the art. Bert Reynolds. Bob Ross. They're nothing like Bob Ross. Bob Ross. Willie. They're so antiquated. What a fabulous you. sentence you've made. Boy George. Jeebus. They're kind of similar to Bob Ross. Well, can we come to a decision about whether they're like Bob Ross or not? <laughs> the fuck? Elton John. It's clearly George Known Bush. Known for the colossal painting. Cracked the ice. They're more famous than Picasso. The amount of sentence in that sentence is astounding. Andy Warhol. Leonardo da Vinci. And they are celebrated for the chapel. Clickety clack. Mm, I'm pretty sure that just put your boy into, the, into a good spot. Three of them closed Time in on y'all. to see all. where all those points point to. That means the winner is... You did it! I can't believe this happened. No, uh, yo, tape deck, hit me up, man. Come My back uh, prize you central station in your soul. at gmail.com and tell me that you won the blather round. But let's totally play another game now. I do like that game, though, as much as it's kind of weird. I enjoy that game. Um, let's see. Quip last three. What? I'm a cactus, yo, because I'm moving to the desert. <clears throat> Speaking of, moving sale, MikeMasonDesign.com. Use code MOVING for 25% off. I'm only half kidding. Now, we're good, but, man, you know, moving is expensive. <clears throat> no pressure. But buy some soup. I'm getting a beer. Where'd everybody go? <laughs> Sorry, Rare L. Who showed up because of the thumbnail and watched us playing games. SSUE is the code. can do this in the corner or whatever give it just a minute for another couple homies I feel like there must be some people watching on a delay 
But yo, check this out. Get this fresh ass fucking beer. What the fuck with this? Real shit. Let's pour this together, dogs. Oh, fuck yeah. That's pretty. This music sounds incredibly appropriate for this fucking German glass that I've got here. You guys can see the labels on that and shit, but... It's like some real-ass German shit. And I also like this glass because it's got like a sweet ass fucking. I don't know if you can see that, but it's like right, right uh, there. It's like 0.5 liter mark. There it is. That's well, hard to see, but it's right there. Anyways, all right. Cheers, my dogs. Let's play some games. Fucking. Yeah! One more motherfucker in! Hell yeah! Thank you, Bear Moose! Fuck yeah! And Bear Moose, yo, um, if you're catching us late or just, like, scroll your thing over so you're watching, like, totally live. Otherwise, you, you know, you guys don't want to have any, like, fake delay. Hey there! This is a game we call Quiplash 3! The one after Quiplash 2. <clears throat> if you've played this game before, you know that my name is Schmitty, and I'm basically harmless. And if you're not in the game, put in the room code and join the audience. Your vote counts, too. Okay, round one. I'm gonna flash two prompts on your device. Type something ingenious that will stand up against another player's response. Then everyone will vote for their fave, and one of you will get an ego boost. You're going to get oh. points based on the percentage of votes you get, so don't hold back. There's no edge, Carrie saying in the chat. <clears throat> Just watch your screen that acts as the controller, because that's always in real time. The screen can be behind, but the controller is always on time. So I don't have any advantage. You're almost out of time. Don't forget your safety quips. Oh, punk motherfuckers. Come All on. right, no time like the present. <sighs> Kicking things Can't off. Win them all. The weirdest celebrity demand in a writer contract, the green room must have blank. Vote away. If it's Gonzo, it's gotta have Perrier for his entire crew of backup dancers. What's next? It should be illegal to put blank in a buffet. Decisions, decisions. Choose your favorite. <laughs> oh, 
And here we have what should have happened at the end of Titanic. And now it's time to vote for your favorite. And now, Jesus' secret middle name. <laughs> and now, pick your favorite. <laughs> Moving right along, still life paintings would be more interesting if they were bowls of blank. All right, people, it's voting time. All right, I'll accept it, because I was in the now, middle of typing alcohol. I thought I had more time. Who's really America's sweetheart? <laughs> oh. Time to pick the one you like best. Definitely not me, but I like that. <laughs> Round one is behind us, and the scoreboard awaits. Get yourselves ready, because round two takes no prisoners. Double the points, double the anxiety. Time's almost done. Save your bacon with a safety quip. <laughs> and now it begins. Motherfuckers. And the first prompt is... What do you get the woman who has everything? Okay, make someone happy. <laughs> Got him. Next on the docket, instead of darkness, an awesome thing to see every time you blink. Okay, choose your favorite. My man Derek Weaver in the house. Play games with us even if you miss the show, my man. Next one up. This is good because I completely this fucked the other one up. This player would win a talent competition it. by 
All right, choose your favorite. I'm about to stop this damn game. So Derek can join the new one. But then somebody would be like, oh, I was gonna win. Next, a horrifying phrase to see embroidered on Grandma's pillow. Now it gets real. Pick your favorite. I was going to say, it's a crack home, but I was in the middle of typing it properly. And they fucked me. I don't know what the fuck Bukaki is either, so... Oh, Bukaki. Okay, you gotta spell that right if you want to know the deal. Next up... One amendment you would add to the U.S. Constitution. I made some reference to that shit, and Carrie was like, I don't know what that is. Here's the fun part. Pick your well, favorite Carrie, quip. Uh... When a circle of men ejaculate on a woman. Like, oh. Not what I expected. Let's keep it going. A really disturbing thing a lifeguard could say during a rescue. Okay, everybody, <laughs> pick your favorite quip. What the? I feel like I've lost my controller. Something has happened here. Damn, man, I'm fucked up. What the heck? Was round two as good for you as it was for me? Let's find out. I'm back. I'm back. I'm in the game. <laughs> All right, Carrie. And now for Riplash, the end you've been <laughs> quipping towards. You'll each get a prompt that needs three separate responses. Easy stuff. Tick-tock, time's almost up. Okay, let's this. do this. When you think about it, there are only three emotions. They are... Vote for the one you like best. Those are both good answers. Yeah, the audience clearly is drunk and high, and in hanging out in the matrix. Three toppings Baskin Robbins will never offer. <laughs> Now it's time to vote for your favorite. 
Bukaki Typhoon. That is descriptive. It's the kind of thing those, those educators we were talking about earlier, you know, would use to describe a glass process. And when you print that blank, you need to really get it like a Bukaki Typhoon. You know what I mean? Like that Your sort of thing. three-step plan for defeating <laughs> King Kong. All right, choose your favorite. I like I like these plans. I, one of them is mine. I really like the other though. For going with me, but I actually think the other option was better. That was a much cooler a route. And behold, the final but scores. I shoot that motherfucker right in the heart when he's not looking because he's distracted by the banana titties. I mean, this is how you gotta do. I don't think so, King Kong. Not today. I mean, that should get deeper, even. You know, like, like if it was really what it took, you'd have to like. Like, make that motherfucker fall in love with you. Like, he's not just some fucking stupid horny-ass ape. He's like a motherfucker with real emotions and shit. So, like, whoever the hero of the planet is to save him from destroying all these goddamn cities... ...has to, like, make that motherfucker fall in love and, like, really break, break intelligent creature's heart. It's terrible. Anyways, th my version of that script was rejected. Well, somehow isn't that even funnier than, like, shaking banana titties at him and just getting him horny and being like, Bah, you're dead. But, like, hell no, I dressed up like a banana and fucking made you fall in love and thought you were going to have a banana family and shit like that, and then none of it. You ain't shit. All that time, the cities were reinforcing their buildings, you know, and now you can't do shit, it's over. Can't even climb them, motherfuckers. They're too slippery. I'm sorry, player. <laughs> Got you. Ah, anyways. <laughs> well, I won that last game. Carrie was in second place, so I guess I'll just give her some stickers or something. As usual, I'm fighting against my penis. <laughs> I'm gonna be right back. Somebody else join us. Now's your chance.
All right, we're ready to do this. Yeah, Bear Moose, you might want to hit that slider. Make sure that motherfucker's all the way over to the right or whatever, so you're not late in the game. The controller is always on time, though. Always watch the controller. But if your stream is behind, you want to fix that. This is your wake-up call. Prepare to die. Welcome to Trivia Murder Party. There is no social mixer in our hotel ballroom. You've been lured into a murderous game of trivia. Only one of you will survive. And me. I'll survive as well. <laughs> Hubble brag. Okay, <laughs> first question. Which of these paintings features a blonde woman? Use your device to answer the question. Man, I, I don't know what the fuck Christina's world is. And I have like a college level art history education, is. so I'm fucking up here. It's my bad. Who got the question right? Really? My penis is doing better than me. This is terrible. Time for consequences. It often does, though. Can't complain. Interior bags. <laughs> Welcome to room 105. It's the pegs game. You're going to drop down this board and try to avoid the death zones. Hmm. Someone needs to pick which slots are death zones. Hey, you. Pick the landing slots that kill. Okay. Let the games begin. Pick a spot to drop from. Ever heard of Chaos Theory? Well, this is Chaos Fact. <laughs> they don't call them death zones for nothing. Poor anal. You're not going anywhere. The end of your life isn't the end of your participation. Keep playing and you just might steal someone else's life force and win the game. Let's try another one. What would an astronomer say about an object with non-circular orbit? This is when we need Will around. But he was like, peace, bitches. <laughs> Who picked this? The yeah, rest we, of you see, are still alive. It turns out we really didn't I want to show you something. <laughs> Just me and Carrie. Welcome ah, to Room 217. Will's the man. We miss him. I'm feeling charitable. You each get $500. Give some of that money to your friend. The person who ends up with the most money will die. But there's a catch. If one of you ends up with $800 or more, I'll kill the other one instead. Begin. Sorry, but I simply have to vote for my penis to win here. Can't vote against my own best interests, as it were. <laughs> Anyways. Hurry up. Now let's follow the money. It looks like money is the root of all your 
something, something. Look, I'm still trying to work on a good line for this one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You don't want to go up against Mike's penis. Being Just... raised in this murder hotel wasn't all it's cracked up to be. Unless you're... Sure, there was a pool, Anyways, but there were right. a lot of corpses in it. This is a tough, tough comedic corner to be pushed into. Let's keep in moving. In 2020. What was the name of Will Smith's character in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air? Shame, cause uh, some families hide never their mind. shame. I'm gonna leave we that joke on the cutting room floor. Pick a box and keep what's inside. See, I can be giving. Oh. oh, cool! It's the cursed mirror that belonged to my old auntie Vale. Fair warning: you're possessed by a ghost now. If they answer faster than you, they'll block out that answer choice for you. Hopefully it's not a real smart and fast ghost, for your sake. We're here. When one player is left awesome. alive, we'll go to the yeah. final round. Next question. Who solved the secret of the old clock? What the fuck is that? Tattoo time! Give okay, okay. me a new tattoo by drawing on your device. <coughs> My dad. I guess I had something else in mind, but I'm sure it'll grow on me. Now vote for your favorite tat. The artist with the fewest votes will die. Some pretty cool tattoos here, especially B. <laughs> vote already. What did we decide? Ugh, gross. What did you do to my back? Time for a little pay back. <laughs> mm. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Carry. Let's try another one. <laughs> Which of the following states of matter has the most tightly packed particles? Mm. Can't fool us. Let's keep moving. I'm not picking favorites, but... Which of my ornamental fish is festooned with plumes? Uh -huh. 
Who picked this? Only a ghost got it wrong. Everyone again? You all need to be taught a lesson. <laughs> Yay! I love God using Cousin Aloysius's magic props. Pick a space inside the box to hide. I'm not sure if there's oxygen, so try shallow breathing. Any good magic trick needs some helpful volunteers. Now, can you confirm that we've never met before? <laughs> Just kidding. A little magician banter. You get a sword. On your device, choose a row or a column to run your sword through. I've always hated magic, but I do love swords. Mind freak! Oh, I needed that. God damn it. This stream is over. Whoa, Click. You all no, die too easy, but I still need someone alive. So. It's kind of arbitrary, but you have the most money. Anywho. Man. The time has come. Here we go. Time for me to come back in the second half. You've made it so far, but can you escape? I'm going to give you a category. Celebrity Perfumes. Tap each answer that fits the category and then press Submit. Let's see the right answers. You advance one space for every correct answer. Well, you'd be closer to the exit if you'd gotten either of those right. But get this, all ghosts get to play too. If a ghost catches up with you, they will steal your life force. Then they can escape and win the game. Here's everyone's next question. And ghosts get a third choice to help them catch up to you. Time is almost up. Carrie's over there googling that shit. I could hear her typing from the other room. Tisk tisk tisk. Moving on. <laughs> WNBA teams. You cannot run that ghost forever. Don't look behind you. It's only darkness. College football bowls. Kind of a gimme. Leap years. Time is almost up. That ghost can smell your life force. Parts of an animal cell. Hmm, that one was too easy. Stole your life force. Venomous animals.
Another life swap. <laughs> Cruciferous vegetables. Time is almost up. Not so fast. You need a perfect answer for your final escape. And that includes the third answer choice now, too. You have to get all the right answers to escape. Aesop's Fables. I'm going to be mounting some legal challenges to this victory in some specific states. Uh, so I don't think we should, anybody should be jumping to claim victory just yet. And I think my surrogates uh, would agree that nobody should concede at this moment. Um... Kudos to the candidates in lower races and such, but uh, this game is not over yet, is what I'm trying to say. No, I'm just playing around. Carrie, good job. Killed it. God damn it. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> All right. Um,. Oh, this shit's going crazy. What? Uh-oh. Do we have sound on this one? What's happening? Hmm. Interesting. I don't know. Something's wrong. I feel like we're not getting music on this one for some reason. Let's see what the deal is. Hey, there it is. There's our problem. Alright. No, I didn't mean to do that. No, we don't know about this game. No, these aren't the games we're looking for. Actually, they are. It's time to rap. Hell yeah. Yo, what are all you robots doing here anyway? Get up in it, dogs. But don't forget, sale on everything in my store at MikeMasonDesign.com. 25% off with code MOVING. Because your boy's moving. Anyways, just letting y'all, just reminding y'all. The whole show, the, no joke though, there's like fucking uh, awesome deal on Kevlar sleeves. Pretty much it cost at this point. Um, and a ton of cane. I mean, I, I know y'all be loving the round eye and the dragon eye cane that sold out in like two hours, but there is still octopus eye. Those octopus eyes are dope, actually. Um, I want to share something real quick. I know we're in the later hours of the show, but this is really cool. Um, Carrie actually has been encasing mad eyes of mine and she 
then pass them on to this company, um, who then utilize them. Like, here's some of these. This is my eye cane that carry encased and made into these cabochons, essentially, that then got turned into these sick ass fucking leather things that. Like hair braid things or whatever it'll be. I love it. It's as tight as hell. Anyways, yeah, I uh I meant to share that earlier even. Doors open in three, two. I have some examples of all the type of stuff being done with like octopus canes and things like that. Yo, you know it's your boy, Shadow Master MC, and tonight Over in your rap battle MCs in here. DJ Rach, tell him how we get down up in here. Hey, yo, 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 can we get these robots up out of here? Can we okay, skip I this? I feel like y'all know the deal hey, here. Shadow, yeah, here okay. we go. All right. We're moving on then. Hey, Shadow's back. Okay, check Time it out. Time to make raps. Robots if you've never done this before, it's like yeah, Mad Libs, so but with rap. Check it out. It's about that time. Rap battle time. Time to write. Get them lyrics together. Write a word or a phrase. Then an entire line that rhymes with the one that we give back to you. Now you got to do that twice, all right? Hit that suggestion button if you need it. Writing done? Cause you should. Here's the draw. Check out who's facing off against who. Okay, check it out, y'all. We got our first two robot battlers ready to get it on. Are y'all <laughs> ready? Y'all ready? Come on, let's do this. Remember, do this. hit those voting buttons during the rhyme. We got to know if it's dope or dog food. I don't rely on chance I make my own dope glass. You like the cheese, but you are sitting on your ass. Ooh. Ooh. Can't get over me. You might be chasing COVID virus. I'll cut your C plus to an F minus. Woo! That was pretty hot. That was pretty hot. Let's go, yo time. I'm giant but gentle. I wouldn't hurt a dog. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. Or the sky. Not my rhymes are so sweet they're covered in ticks. I came here to win, but I will lose. Oh, 
pass on that because this is your first time doing this, but don't ever <laughs> come back with that whackness. You know, Oof. there's another round. Damn. Tell me who was the whack cat and then tell me who was the hotline. Yeah. Anal clearly murdered it. Where my MC's at, come on and get down. Let's get it started. I'm known. I'm here to studio. Catch me in the kitchen making pizza dough. I live so large, I break glasses. Take a dab and teach classes. Now, I know this is your first time. But if you ever come back here with that whackness, I'm gonna unscrew every bolt in your body. Yo, where the I next spot at? Wow. Get your gears in gear. Peter is mean to me. That was crazy. My eye is on the prize because I'm fantastic. Sorry if you miss eat it. Don't do something drastic. I always buy organic because I'm rich as dandy. Cute as a button and sweeter than candy. Alright, peace and love. Let's move on. Right now is the time to vote. So start clicking that button. I have lawyers standing by. <laughs> Let's get those votes in expedition. <laughs> we have gotten our winner. Congratulations. I'm sorry, everybody. Round the game just over. crashed. Next I don't know coming. what happened. Good job, everybody. I'm just playing. Let's check out those scores. Time to well, get right. It's your loss. I'm about to come back in the second half with some very brutal things here. It's panicking right now just remember the best part of freestyling is that you don't have to be amazing you just have to be fast and pretty good so just be pretty good it's not that hard to be pretty good i am extremely proud of this fucking These rhyme are the round two matchups based on mm. what you did in round one the money like one is referential to the, the other round. and all right first battle Let's ideologically brutal Sorry. Anyways. Have you ever considered a career in boofing? <laughs> if I give over my right to rhyme. Nah. You're like a cartoon. A regular mom. Cat. Fat. Sat. Rat. Fat. Matt. Damn. They did get me. I gotta give it up. Oh, I love that, my giant scary friend. 
You know you gotta answer that. Put some weights on them muscles and get them words out. Well, now this feels way over the top, but... Looks like you made it back from the church. Mind empty, need some scientific research. There are two things in life, death and glass blowers. Step to me, get taxed harder than church goes. Boom! Yo! Right? Come on! Thank you, Battle computer. It's time for you to pick up your devices and vote. Did you forget to vote? Hi, hi. Coming back in the second half here and shit. Good job, good job. Congratulate. Hey, I also touched my dude. controller. That's the biggest nipples. toe I ever seen in my life. All right, where my next two MCs at? All right. I'm about to kick it up and add some garlic powder. You smell nice, but might still need a shower. Ready, kid? Here comes another verse. I'm not mean, but your rap was just worse. Ooh. Oosh. All right, all right, thank you, thank you. Now we gotta move on. That was pretty harsh. Yeah, it's your turn now. No dress rehearsal. This is a festival. Bring the fire. Light the torch. Let's make a spectacle. Your rhymes are so weak they can't lift a pillow. Lay down. Go to sleep. Boy, you are just too slow. Ooh. Oh, no. okay. All right, that's cool. All right, now it's time for you to use your device. That's a tough one. Vote. to vote. I had to do the coin flip. Alright, y'all. Here's your winner. Alright, y'all. That's the end of round two. Now let's check out the scoreboard. <laughs> All right, now it's time to get them lyrics flowing. You got to get in them, so let them have it. All right. Gotta remember, Carrie. They didn't. I didn't know what the setup was gonna be. <laughs> you 
can, use right for me to have us fill in your line. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Okay, we got the card for the final round. Woo, I am so excited. All right, you look like you ready. Come on, let's get it, let's hear it. <laughs> all right, all right, here we go. You're as smooth as a three-legged tiger. The important thing is, we're all having fun. When you rhyme, you sound like a dying goat. I deserve a lot of negative votes. Really? That's what uh -huh. you came up with? Time for you to answer. You gotta come strong. I will have satisfaction. I will have contentment. You're just depressed because you can't pay rent. Nailed it! I'm hunting for trophies, but you're disheartened. I will hang you on my wall because you are bad. No, got him! Got him! Give it up, give it up for that major ball! Woo! Ding, ding. Ah, ding. Ah, ah. Vote to see who's the dopest. It's almost like I just smoked a death. A marijuana! This is so hot! Ah! 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 Drugs. I'm in verses. Oh, oh. Everybody voted. A zero percent anal. Congratulations, y'all. <laughs> That's what my nickname in college best, was. Time to see who's really number one. You give me snake eyes. Talk shit and get hospitalized. <laughs> Frankly, I'm disgusted by the sight of your death face. When you speak best in lowercase. Oh, oh, oh. That's kind of cool. I know you can do better than that, though. You got an answer for that? Come on now, you got to come strong with it. Your raps are done. Time to dig your own pipe. The seals are done. Maria's not tight. <laughs> <laughs> All of the runs make me want to chortle. Curl off your head and stick it on a turtle. <laughs> Yo, Pretty critical wait. breaking bad reference there. I gotta right, give it up. If y'all didn't happen. catch that. Let's get those votes in. <laughs> Filing the two members of the other game. This is what happened. Congratulations. Uh, ineligible for sticker packs. Good job, and shit. MCs. That was hot. But now we got to see who won this. Congratulations. Here's your winner. Now somebody get this big son of a biscuit out of my way so I can keep it moving. <laughs> Yo, check it out. This is Shadow Master MC. You already know the business. We up out of here. Peace. All right, all right. Like I said, there's no concession here. I will be contesting the results of this in rap court. And, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm being blocked by my own desktop. This is crazy. See, if I close this, I'll be blocked by myself. <laughs> Yo, what? Okay, anyways, enough of this, uh, game. But this is pretty trippy, yo. I'm not a- whoa. Fuck yeah, man, I'm like a fucking... Give money to torchbass.org. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'm just saying this is this is pretty tight.
I'm going to be doing this for the next 20 minutes. So if that's what you're here for, that's dope. If not, then just... <laughs> all right, all right. Yo, for real, though, all right, I'm sorry. That was ridiculously indulgent, but whatever. I'm drunk, and we're having fun together. I really did uh, enjoy this evening with you guys. Uh, shout out to Vance, who left us before uh, game time. Wisely, probably. But, you know, for real, um, much love to everybody who tuned in and made this a dank time. I really do. I love and appreciate you guys. Uh, like I said, man, um, I really am looking forward to this time in the future here when we can do some sort of live version of, of what we're doing here and actually play these dope-ass games together and fucking have a drink and, you know, give that cheers to a good-ass fucking time and watch some dank glass all of that we're past the point where i'm going to give you anything super eloquent so we'll just leave it there thanks to everybody who tuned in i really do appreciate you guys i this whole experience is is you know so important and you guys are the shit i love y'all peace